no one has really documented gaining 200 pounds and you know almost reaching 600. Emmeline Reed's overeating and junk food obsession started before she even reached the age of eight. She said that she often experienced food insecurity and whenever she did get food it was cheap fast food that she would overeat out of fear that there would be no food in the future. My parents they spent the majority of their money on drugs. That's just how it was. Um, sometimes we couldn't even make rent and um, sometimes our electricity would turn off and this and that. So when we did get food and they finally bought food, it was majority of the time, because back in the day, McDonald's value menu really was a value menu. Everything was 99 cents. And um, my dad would buy a lot of that at once. And I would sit there and I would eat probably three of each. And that's not good. And I would do that because I was afraid when I'd be eating again. At around age nine, Emma was removed from her parents' care and placed in a children's shelter where she started developing symptoms of binge eating. When I was about nine, ten years old, I was in an all-girls group home and all of our meals were planned. All of our snacks were planned. We didn't get to choose when we ate. We didn't get to choose what to eat. It was all just planned for us. And I remember there were times where if there were no one in the kitchen and everyone was busy doing something like the staff or the other girls that I was living with, I would steal little like granola bars or fruit roll-ups. Like it didn't matter. Something quick and easy and ready to just stick in my pocket or stick in a bag I was carrying. And there were three bathrooms in the group home. So I would steal the food. I would go to the bathroom. I would eat it and I would devour it really fast and then I would hide the wrappings. Um, I remember also, I was at the group home. I guess this is when it really started, my binge eating. I did Girl Scouts. I had an order that someone ordered. It was peanut brittle. It was a pretty big thing of peanut brittle. And I remember I was not wanting to, I think it was a teacher actually, who I was supposed to give it to. I was not wanting to give it to them. Um, long story short, I did not give the brittle to the teacher. She never asked about it or anything, which I thought was really weird. What I did do with it though, was one day I was supposed to be showering, but what I did was I turned the shower on, I closed the door, so the staff thought I was showering, but I was actually in my room, in the closet, hiding, eating the whole thing of peanut brittle. By age 11, she reached 290 pounds and went on her first diet, Weight Watchers. My first diet ever was when I was 11 years old and it was for Weight Watchers and I successfully lost three pounds and quit. <laughs> when I was at an all girls group home, they would try little things where they gave me lower fat milk. I literally had my own bottle of of milk it was really embarrassing i was only like 10 or 11 years old and they would limit my food intake she continued to gain weight over the next few years and reached her highest childhood weight of 420 pounds at age 16 and she tried weight watchers for the second time actually my teacher paid for it for me you know she knew a lot about my past and again i was in foster care she knew why because my file was in her office just like every other student had a file in her office so she knew a lot about me she wanted to make sure i was okay always she was just a sweetheart so the fact that she was willing to pay for me was amazing and i only went twice she maintained her weight at around 420 pounds until the age of 21 when she moved in with a girlfriend named crystal shortly after moving in together in 2011 they both went on a serious weight loss journey during which Ember lost 89 pounds in seven months. She then regained 37 pounds, reaching 368 pounds in November 2013 when she started her YouTube channel. Hi, um, my name is Amber Lynn and I wanted to start um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. Okay, let's quickly speed run Ember's weight loss journey. In 2013, she said her ultimate goal weight. Currently though, I think if I ever made it to 230 pounds, 
I'd feel like I was dreaming. So that is my current goal weight, 230 pounds. She tried and quit counting calories, the 30 day squat challenge and intuitive eating. She ended the year nine pounds heavier. In 2014, Ember could walk for more than 30 minutes and jump rope. Her goal weight was still 230 pounds. She tried and quit counting calories, 100 days of movement, quitting sugar, 15 weeks of movement, a Just Dance challenge, a Strive Gym program, Weight Watchers, Daily Weigh-Ins, and a Facebook group challenge. She ended the year at exactly the same weight, 377 pounds. In 2015, she updated her goal weight. My Instagram name is Amberlyn's Journey to 199 because that is my goal weight, 199.8 pounds. She tried, has fit, Overeaters Anonymous, Active 30, a vegetarian diet, a daily Instapic challenge, Weight Watchers, Counting Calories, and Daily Weigh-Ins. She gained 68 pounds and ended 2015 at 445 pounds. By 2016, she was struggling with everyday tasks. Even just like walking in a grocery store has become super difficult for me. Just anything, honestly. I, everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I do too, but it's like 50 times harder. So I hold on to here at first and then I go, Ugh. oh, I was going to get pajamas and I forgot. And then I hold on to this little thing. I don't know what it is, but it's there. It's for the handrails when they put them up. And then there's a thing right here that I can hold on to. So I do that. And then... She tried and quit counting calories, cutting soda, vegan diet, Weight Watchers, mindful eating, daily weigh-ins, fentamine, water challenge, personal incentives. By the end of the year, she had gained 44 pounds and ended 2016 at 489 pounds. In 2017, counting calories, no binging challenge, Weight Watchers, meal prepping, walking with Eric, by the end of the year, she had gained about half a pound and she ended 2017 at 489.4 pounds. In January 2018, she struggled to jump. I don't know if I can jump anymore. Mm -hmm. Woo. What the heck? Mm -hmm. My fat ass can't do this. Oh this is too cool. Yeah. That thing's really long. I didn't know it was that long. I <laughs> want to give you kisses. <laughs> oh my God. Then I let myself go. Mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore. I'm like scared to jump. So you're right? Yeah. I'm stretching. <laughs> Hopefully that works. I don't know. I don't have to do it anymore. Uh. One. Two. One. By November, she struggled to stand for a few minutes at a time. You guys know how I use a scooter in the stores? So we were at Target last night and my scooter died. <laughs> My scooter literally died, and I was just like, okay, okay, this is cool. And we were way in the Christmas area, so that's way in the back. I'm like, okay, hmm, interesting. What am I going to do? Becky had actually went to the bathroom, so I ended up texting her. Literally, I have the text message. Let me read it to you. This is, like, literally so true. Hold on, my friend texted me. I said... <laughs> This is like so embarrassing. I could like die from this. Um, I said my cart died. Can you bring me another? And she was just like, okay. And I was like, this sucks. I'm literally just stuck in an aisle with my scooter in your cart. <laughs> because she had a cart and I was using a scooter. And she's like, I'm trying, but the bathroom was farther than I thought it was. And I was like, someone just made an annoying sound like they saw me, like they were shocked at how fat I am, which is true. Um, it was so embarrassing. I do get a lot more stares and more mean gestures now that I've gained, you know, weight. Um, she replied with, ignore that fucker. <laughs> and I was like, I did. And then um, I ended up getting out of the scooter. There was actually a worker near me who was putting up Christmas stuff, putting more Christmas stuff out on the shelves. And she was actually really, really nice. And she was like, you know, if that cart's dead or that scooter's dead, you can just, you know, leave it there. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I ended up getting out of the scooter, taking Becky's cart, and I was waiting for her. And I think it was up most about 
five or six minutes and I couldn't breathe. My back was hurting. It was just kind of felt like I stood up, you know, and I was holding like all this weight on me and it just kept getting harder and harder and harder to hold. That is just like the best way to describe it. And I was just like, please hurry, my back. So that's a situation that truly did happen. Cause a lot of people are like, you can walk in the store, you don't need a scooter. I do, I've gotten to the point where I need a scooter and that's pathetic. She tried and quit weight loss wars with Becky, counting calories, meal prepping, daily walking, daily weigh-ins, weight watchers, 123 reasons why, consulting an Instagram dietitian. By the end of the year, she gained 71 pounds and ended 2018 at 560 pounds. In January 2019, things had gotten so bad that she could not stand on the scale and she struggled to breathe sitting down. Everything is becoming harder for me. So sometimes when I step on the scale, that is hard for me and I lose my balance and my legs shake a lot, like a lot, <laughs> um, which you guys will see here in a minute because I'm standing on a small platform when my legs are so huge and they're not used to standing like this. Yes, fat arm, hi. So my legs aren't used to standing like this, they're used to standing like this, so when I'm trying to stand like this, they're weeble wobbling and I couldn't get a read on the scale. So I decided to try weighing myself again. I don't understand how this happened. I mean, I do, but I don't. Like, I overate and I binged. By mid-2019, she had lost all her mobility. She could not roll over and she had to sleep on a mattress on the floor because she had fallen twice trying to get off her bed. To get up off the bed, I do this little like turny bit and I get up by using like the strength in my feet <laughs> and my feet slipped from under me and I landed on my left knee. It terrified me. I couldn't get up or anything. So how I had to get up was I had to crawl onto the bed in this like weird maneuver. And it was just, it was pitiful. I was like, are you for real right now? I feel like the second time, which was last night, actually scared me a bit more because this time I was wearing my flats. <laughs> I decided, you know what? If I'm gonna start getting up off the bed and my freaking feet are so damn soft that I'm gonna slip on this like flooring. It's kind of like a hardwood floor. You guys have seen it in my videos before. But if I'm gonna be slipping now, um, I wanna just have shoes on that have a grip, and my flats do have a grip. This was actually in the middle of the night. I had to get up and go pee again, whatever. And Becky was sleeping, and I put on my flats, I got up, and I didn't fall. Like, I was totally good, I was fine. I think I took about three steps, and I don't know why, but Twinkie had a few of her really small dog foods on the floor. And I think I just like slid on one, but instead of going backwards on my butt, my body just naturally went forward and I landed on my right knee. So the night before I landed on my left knee and then the next night I landed on my right knee, but this time it was from a higher spot and I just went boom. She tried and quit a 100 day weight loss book, Octavia, Weight Watchers, 100 Days of Something, Weight loss doctor's diet, obese to beast, calorie counting, freshly. She reached her highest weight of 572.4 pounds in April 2019. In 2020, she updated her goal weight. I've changed my goal weight, which I've done several times. It used to be 20, uh, 20. It used to be 220, then it used to be 199, and then it was 170. Now it's 172. I know those two pounds don't mean really anything, but I guess it kind of does. I don't know. I changed it because um, 172 would be exactly 100 pounds down. Well, 172.4. She tried and quit 1 million steps, freshly, weekly weigh-in, Operation Curvy Calories, Noom, Jenny Craig, meal prepping, Weight Watchers. By the end of the year, she was 44 pounds down and she ended 2020 at 528 pounds. In 2021, her mobility had improved a bit. She could walk for a few minutes. She didn't have a goal weight anymore. 
I don't have an ultimate goal weight. I just know that I want to obviously lose a few hundred pounds for sure. I want to be healthier. I want to feel healthier. I just want to be in a better place in general. She tried and quit Jenny Craig, meal prepping, Weight Watchers, natural lifestyle, daily walking. By the end of the year, she had lost 24 pounds and ended 2021 at 504 pounds. In 2022, she tried and quit Noom, outpatient program, daily walking, Weight Watchers, no takeout challenge, keto, or Zempec, counting calories. By the end of 2022, she gained 16 pounds. So she started 2023 at 520 pounds. And at the making of this video, she is 511 pounds. I can name five channels off the top of my head who have started off as weight loss channels and no longer do weight loss or have brought weight loss to their channel and no longer do it. And they're obese as well and they don't get hate like this. Welcome to part two of my three-part series, exploring the spectrum of hate against Emberlyn Reed. In part one, I discussed the history of scandals and serious accusations that cultivated a group of people who completely hate Amber. In this part two, I will be deconstructing her failed weight loss journey, which has cultivated a group of frustrated supporters like Timber Jones, who on 5 July 2023 commented, I want to support you, Amber. You just make it so hard. Your life has become way too sad to watch. And I honestly feel cheated for having believed you would actually try to save yourself this time. Before I get into the main criticisms of Ember's weight loss journey, I need to quickly address the common throwaway arguments that people often use to muddy the waters and distract from the real conversation about Ember's actions. First, the fat phobia argument. Yes, there is a systematic issue where people see a random fat person and immediately impose their own health views by telling the person to lose weight without knowing whether the person is interested in weight loss or not. However, this argument does not apply to Emberlyn Reed because it's not her audience who've told her she needs to lose weight. It's Ember herself who has repeatedly cried that she's miserable at her weight, specifically how her weight has destroyed her health, mobility and freedom. I need to lose weight. I'm just miserable. Um, my body just hurts from all the food I've been eating. I am not comfortable at this weight at all. Like everything is difficult. Everything is hard. Everything is harder than it should. I'm 25 years old and I literally feel like I'm 110 because every step I take, every breath I take, every movement I make just hurts and it's hard. And a lot of people just don't understand it. It's like I'm already dead. I don't get to do the things that a normal 25 year old gets to do and it hurts you guys. My body is giving out. I'm afraid of what's happening like on the inside that I don't know about. I'm terrified. I'm going to be 28 in just a couple months and I know for a fact that if I continue how I'm doing now. I won't make it to 40. Here are some of the health consequences of Ember's weight. In 2018, she developed a habit of holding in her pee for long periods of time because she could not fit inside public bathroom stalls. And when she was at home, she struggled to get up and go to the bathroom. This habit led to a persistent bladder infection, which resisted multiple courses of antibiotic treatment. I don't like using public restrooms, but if I have to, um, bathroom stalls are so annoying to me because for me, being this size, they're super small. So I have to always use the bigger stall and I usually always wait for the bigger stall to be open. So I'll be like almost peeing my pants, but if the bigger stall is taken, I will not use a smaller stall. There obviously has been times where I've had to use the smaller stall, which for me is embarrassing because I have to like walk in there sideways and I have to like go back by the toilet just to close the door. And it's just a whole situation that I just don't like dealing with. Uh, getting up off my bed and walking to the bathroom, I'm like, <sighs> I'm actually about to go to the hospital, to the ER, because that pain is still there in my back. Of course, it's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's like a constant dull ache in my 
right lower back, kind of where you'd get some kidney pain. So I, for one, am worried and I want to get that checked out. So after they did the test, the doctor came in and he came in and told me I have a gnarly bladder infection. So if you guys are curious why I have a bladder infection, I hold my pee a lot. It's a very bad habit and that's one of the ways you can get a bladder infection. I can hold my pee for hours. It's not good. <laughs> so um, I got like a bunch of paperwork and in the paperwork it says stop doing that. She also has high blood pressure, sleep apnea, problems with swelling, and she cannot fit a car seat belt around her. Someone asked, did you contact your doctor about the congestive heart failure concerns like you said you would? I 100% did and she told me it is definitely just because I am gaining weight rapidly, which she said is due to me binge eating and <laughs> eating so many calories at once. She constantly talks about her fear of diabetes, which runs in her family and has caused her father to lose his leg. Diabetes runs in my family. Um, I mean, almost everyone in my family has diabetes or is pre-diabetic. And I, I, can't, I, I can't imagine having diabetes. And my dad, um, when I was younger and when I was living with him, he uh, got very sick. Very, very sick and I thought I was going to lose him. I was very young at the time and um, I, I couldn't quite understand it or, or grasp onto what was happening. Um, it was to the point of... He lost his hearing for a little bit. I, I I still don't understand it at all, what happened. Um, but he was in the hospital for a very, very, very long time. And when he came out of the hospital, he couldn't hear. He has suffered with diabetes for the longest time and still to this day. Um, I don't really talk to him much. And whenever I do talk to him... He always says how he is in and out of the hospital because of his diabetes. Um, he actually has a hole in his leg. Very big, gross, deep hole in his leg from diabetes. And I, I, oh, I just can't, I don't want that to be me. And it scares me, scares me. She also ignored early warning signs of uterine cancer because she attributed them to her weight. What were some of the signs that made you think something was wrong? So I'm assuming this person meant with like cancer. So um, for my whole life, I've always had an irregular period. So I never really thought anything of it when over two years ago, I started bleeding and I bled every single day. Um, some days were lighter than other days and other days were heavier. And I didn't think anything of it until probably it was going on maybe the second or third month when I really sat there and I was just like, what is going on? Like, truthfully and honestly, what is going on? And in my head, I just kept saying, it's because of my weight. It's because of my weight. It's because of my weight. Amber has gone through long stretches of time without washing her body properly because she could not move or sometimes fit in a shower or a bathtub. My mom had a, it wasn't a cloth foot bathtub, but she had, it wasn't like a normal bathtub. I don't know how it's explained. You see it in the videos a lot. Um, Amber Lynn did not shower the whole time we were at my mom's. She did not like the bathtub. She refused to even try to get it in. I think she was, she was having a hard time getting her leg over it. It was the thing because it is pretty high sides. And she just basically, you know, whore bathed. <laughs> she just, you know, she washed her hair. I, like I'd help her wash her hair over the shower. Um, and she just kind of washed with washcloths and wore plenty of deodorant. That's, that's what she did. So we have a walk-in shower. Um, the walk-in shower has, you know, okay, so there's two clear doors that are like this, and they'll close like that, okay? So this little space 
once I open the door and move it over, there's this little space that you walk into the shower. This, okay, this makes me want to cry. <laughs> I have gotten stuck before. Um, it hurts to get in the shower because it's such a small space that I have to walk into. To the average person, it's probably, you know, perfectly fine. It is a pretty small space, but um, it's hard for me. Um, it scrapes my stomach when I get in. I have to, you know, suck in as hard as possible, but sometimes that doesn't even work. I'm able to get in, but it just hurts really bad because I'm literally like <gasps> scraping myself. And to me, that's one of the biggest struggles because, you know, showering every day, that's something I deal with every day. And it's something that I'm, af I'm, I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that there's going to be one time where I break the door, um, where the glass literally just shatters because I'm too fat, or I'm afraid that I'm going to get like extremely stuck or an ambulance is going to have to come or something. I couldn't shower at all. There was a large portion of 2019, if not the whole 2019, where I literally couldn't shower. Oh my God, okay. Um, I bathed in bed. I bathed in bed. Um, that's so hard to say. <laughs> In 2019, she made multiple ER visits due to an infected toenail, which could have been a result of Ember's inability to bend down and clean her feet. It is really hard for me to bend down and tie my shoes and put on socks. My whole toenail came off. Hi, nice to meet you. And I did everything I could to keep it clean, band-aid, da-da-da. Like, I did everything. I did a lot of research. Like, the thing is... You, no matter how much you clean something, you could still get bacteria in it. It can cause infections. Like, no matter what, even though I did everything I could, something bad could still happen. So, flash forward about a month after that, which was where I'm getting to next. I woke up the next day and my whole bottom of my leg was super red, like hot. And I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what it was right off the bat. Cellulitis. For years, Emma has not been able to live independently because she struggles to perform basic household chores. 22, I sometimes depend on people to get things done or I rarely depend on anyone else to get things done. Sometimes I depend on um, other people to get things done. I share a house with roommates. We all do chores together and Obviously, I'm a bigger girl, so it's harder for me to do certain things. You know, things like mopping because it hurts my back. Doing the dishes is horrid on my back. That is like the number one most painful thing I could do is wash dishes. I literally am like my second dish in and I am just crippling in pain. It hurts so freaking bad. Um, just regular house chores, you know, cleaning out the litter box hurts my back. Just everything makes me so like, like tired, but that's another struggle that we're going to talk about. But everything is just kind of painful and makes me breathe really hard. And I feel like I just can't get any job done without feeling like I'm an absolute whale. I can't even do my own laundry fully by myself. Like that's ridiculous. A few months ago when I put away groceries, I really couldn't. I could maybe put away one bag and then I would sit down and just be like exhausted and like defeated. Um, but now, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, I cook without sitting now. I do the dishes without sitting. I put away all the groceries without sitting. Of course, like Becky helps me with the groceries. I'm so grateful for the people in my life now, but it's just like, I feel like a burden all the time. Second is the why do you care argument. People often ask, why does Ember's audience care that she's not losing weight? It's her life and her health she's destroying. 
Well, they care because Ember has asked them to care on multiple occasions. I want people to truly care about me and say, Amber Lynn, you got this. Like, I know you got this. Like, you're going to be so excited when one day you can fit in those jeans that you've been wanting to wear. Like, that's the type of support I need, the type of support I want. So this is gonna be hard and I need all the support that I can get. When I get kind comments or kind messages, those are the ones that wanna kick me into high gear and that's what works for me. Everyone's different. So yeah, this is my journey to 400 pounds. In 2019, when Ember's audience decided to mass unsubscribe and not be part of her weight loss journey anymore, Ember asked them to come back. Yeah, I'm just, Sorry, and I can't say it enough, but yeah, I hope the people who are still here stay. And I hope the people who have left come back. And yeah, I'm just sorry. When Ember continually asks her audience to care, she's asking for some level of emotional investment. And that emotional investment turns into frustration when she continues to do things that are counterproductive to weight loss while being smug about it. The third is the mob mentality argument. People say that the anti-Emberlyn mob, aka Hater Nation, is devoted to nitpicking Ember's weight loss decisions to create false outrage. Well, the criticism and frustration about Ember's weight loss journey predates the Hater community. After years in foster care, the only family member that Ember was close to was her aunt, who then stopped talking to her in 2016. My aunt has completely stop talking to me in december um she blocked me on facebook she blocked me on her cell phone blocked my number completely um i have no way of getting a hold of her whatsoever and the reasoning is because i'm fat her aunt essentially just became very upset with her and blocked her on everything because she was never sticking to any diets and she was constantly basically self-destructing herself. Let's dial the clock back to the early days of her weight loss journey before it was profitable or fun to criticize Amber. There were three viewers who perfectly encapsulate how Amber transforms her supporters into trolls. I would say the OG of the supporter to troll pipeline is a user named Capstone1892 we first met on December 8th, 2013, just 20 days after Ember started her channel. Ember uploaded a video titled Feeling Kind of Down, in which she complained about somebody leaving her harsh comments. Um, these last few days, I've had somebody comment me very rudely and harshly on my channel. Capstone replied to this video, and said, don't listen to the haters. Haters are going to hate. We're going to drop this weight. Then on December 11th, Ember uploaded another weigh-in video. December is rough. Um, I'm having major issues because it's the holidays. Um, I feel like if it was any other time, I'm not making excuses, but I feel like if it was any other time, I would be rocking these weigh-ins to the best of my ability and making you guys proud of me. Um... But it is the holidays and there's food around that normally isn't and I am eating it. Kevstone replied with a constructive comment, first acknowledging that nobody expects Ember to be perfect and then told her to check out a weight loss support group called TOPS. On December 17th, she gained an additional two pounds and changed her goal from trying to lose weight and said she wanted to maintain her weight until the new year. I told myself that... It's December, it's holidays, it's almost the end of the year, so don't beat yourself up. Capstone replied that Ember was making excuses, and Ember replied to that comment and agreed with Capstone. The next day, on December 18th, she ate poorly, but she was proud of herself because she could have done a lot worse. Today, I weighed in at 371.6, so I stayed the same. I was happy to see that I did not gain weight because that would have actually upset me a lot, but I didn't gain and I didn't lose. I mean, that's still me being on the right track. To which Capstone commented, lose the I could have done worse phrase from your vocabulary. It will enable you to fail. Amber replied, doubling down, that she was proud because she could have done much worse. 
Then they had a back and forth exchange with Capstone telling Amber that being proud of herself when she fails because she didn't fail as badly as she could have sets a low standard and would not be conducive to long-term success. In the next video on December 19th, Amber dedicated a lecture to Capstone. Um, I'm not being rude at all. I just want to say that first. <laughs> a lot. 99.99999% of you are supporting me and understanding my decisions and <clears throat> accepting me for me and watching my journey and how it goes for me. Um, but there's this point zero 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 one of you that um, is consistently being very rude and is... Just being a jerk. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. This person coming at me is saying I'm making nothing but excuses. This is just getting to me very bad because this person is constantly watching my videos trying to pinpoint everything that's wrong with them. First of all, I'm not perfect and neither are you. Neither is anybody. Nobody is perfect. I don't care what anybody has to say. I'm not a perfect person and for people to lose weight, they have to go through struggles first. This person is beating me up so bad with their words saying that since I started this channel i'm actually up weight yes i am i'm not going to deny that i am a normal person i'm going through normal struggles i'm going through daily struggles everyone's struggles are different i don't care what anybody has to say regarding that i am sorry and i am not willing to beat myself up over not wanting to gain weight just because this one person has some huge problem with it. It's my life. It's my journey. It's my choices. I'm not being rude whatsoever. I'm just very annoyed with this person. Um, I don't know why this person even watches my videos if all they want to do is be rude. I just don't understand it. On her next weigh-in, on January 1st, 2014, she was 9 pounds heavier than when she started her journey and also failed her goal to maintain her weight. Then about four months into Ember's journey, we met another user named Dina Dre. On 26th March, 2014, Ember was starting a new plan to reduce her sugar intake. Dina left a comment giving Ember a tip to reduce sugar cravings by having protein and fats for breakfast before consuming anything sugary in the morning. Ember responded to this comment and said that Dina always gives her great advice. Amber subsequently failed her sugar reduction plan and started Weight Watchers, which she quit in April 2014. Dina advised Amber not to give junk food such power over her life and try to stay away from it because it clearly triggered her to overeat. As we will discuss later, Amber doesn't like the idea of giving up junk food. So she replied that it is not junk food which triggers her to overeat. On April 29th, Ember started another weight loss challenge and Dina left her an encouraging comment telling her not to give up and that each failure is a step closer to success. Ember responded positively to this comment. Then five days later, she quit the new weight loss plan. So I'm up a pound. I keep going back and forth between this pound. Um, I guess it's better than just overall gaining. So currently I'm maintaining... Um, but starting Monday, I'm gonna consistently be going down, trust me. To which Dina commented that Ember uses everything as an excuse to quit her diets. Then Ember thighs that it must be exhausting to constantly flip-flop. She finished by advising Ember again to seek eating disorder counseling. Ember absolutely flipped out at Dina. She called her a negative person who didn't want to see her succeed then proceeded to call her an insane person who watches her videos to leave negative words and finished by telling her to get a life. Then seven days later, Ember was introducing yet another weight loss plan. Then Dina commented that Ember always changes her mind every few days and behaves like a child who doesn't hold herself accountable to her goals. Ember responded by calling Dina a train wreck with a sad life. From this point on, Dina became the main antagonist of the Emberverse. She would call Ember out for everything, including the treatment of her pets. We're now nine months into Emberlyn's journey and she had been making no progress on weight loss. 
On July 9th, she posted an emotional video apologizing to her audience for flip-flopping. I mainly kind of just want to apologize to you guys for portraying myself in the way that I do. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I am showing like my real struggle and I know when I say struggle I mean with my weight loss and I know for a lot of people it's probably hard to sit around watching somebody who wants to lose weight but won't do it who continues to say they're going to do one thing and then don't. I'm sure it frustrates a lot of people, makes a lot of people angry, makes a lot of people dislike me and just look at me like a really low person. And I completely understand. A user named Purple Sparkle left a supportive comment telling Ember that she loves her videos. On July 21st, when Ember posted another video saying that she was leaving YouTube because she could not handle the rude comments. I'm just done. Um, that's all I can say is I'm done. I do not know how famous YouTubers can handle the hate. Because right now I'm literally shaking and I'm trying my hardest not to cry because I just can't handle it anymore. I mean, you'd think that people would feel guilty to be so rude to somebody. Purple Sparkle commented, it's sad that you are letting them win. On July 22nd, Ember decided not to quit. Purple Sparkle commented, I'm glad you're staying. I'm here to support you all the way. Fast forward three months to October, Ember flip-flopped several more times and gained more weight. And she posted a video about yet another new plan. Purple Sparkle commented that Ember needs to pay for a personal trainer and mental health help instead of spending money on ugly jewelry and scarves that Ember had been hauling on her channel. Ember responded, Are you bipolar? One minute you're sticking up for me and the next you're being like the people you always tell me to ignore, lol. Please go somewhere else. It's not for me to discuss whether these people are justified in their decision to stick around on Ember's channel and antagonize her. All I'm going to do is dive into the elements of her weight loss journey, which cultivated frustration, distrust, and lack of sympathy from her audience. I have binge eating disorder. I am a food addict. I am an emotional eater. The majority of Ember's audience are people who understand that weight loss is difficult, especially for people with eating disorders. However, the frustration with Ember comes from the way she misrepresents the information about her relationship with food in order to fit whichever narrative she wants to sell to her audience in that particular moment. Since the early days of her channel, whenever Ember's audience tried to hold her accountable for failing or quitting her diets, she would blame binge eating disorder, food addiction, and mental health. She would cry on camera about how binge eating rendered her helpless and would lash out at anyone who even questioned if she really had a binge eating disorder. But then in 2023, when having binge eating disorder no longer served her because it stood in the way of her getting approved for weight loss surgery, she denied ever having binge eating disorder. It is unclear if or when Ember was formally diagnosed with binge eating disorder because her story has changed several times over the years. In 2014, Ember said she was first assessed for binge eating disorder when she was in foster care at around age 14. Um, when I was in the children's shelter, I, I've been there so many different times, not even funny. But when I was about 14, 15, um... I was assessed for a binge eating disorder. Um, she did say I had it. Then in 2018, she revised her story and said that a therapist she was seeing at 16 said that her eating behavior looked like binge eating, but it's not clear if it was an official diagnosis. Next question is, were you really diagnosed with binge eating disorder? When I was 16 years old, that was one of the times that I was in the children's shelter and my therapist it might have been in passing, but she did say this is binge eating disorder. I never got a pamphlet that said, oh, you have binge eating disorder or anything like that. But she did tell me this is binge eating disorder. And we did spend a couple weeks talking about it. So maybe as a 16 year old, 
I took that and I ran with it. Then a few months later in August, she had a session with an online therapist on better health and said she was officially diagnosed with binge eating disorder. And obviously I can't change overnight. You guys know I suffer with binge eating, which I do want to talk to you guys about because I was officially diagnosed with binge eating disorder by my therapist. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yesterday, but it was the day before. And I've, I've seen the message myself. Her audience was concerned that one session was not enough to get a diagnosis. In May 2020, Ember uploaded a video titled Stop Telling Me Who I Am, in which she pushed back against the people who were questioning her binging, and she said she definitely had binge eating disorder. I see all these comments. You're not a binge eater. You're such a liar. You don't plan binges. These are people who don't know their information fully, and I understand that. And by seeing those comments, it's like people start to make me question who am I as a person? Do I know what I'm talking about? Duh, of course I do, because this is my story. This is my journey. Then in 2022, she started seeing a therapist from an outpatient weight loss program. This is the first time from an actual eating disorder clinic program that I am officially diagnosed with binge eating disorder. Then near the end of 2022, she started seeking weight loss surgery, but she was not approved for the surgery because a dietitian wanted her to first go through treatment for binge eating disorder for a year. Ember was upset and said that she did not want to wait a year for weight loss surgery, and she started questioning if she really had binge eating disorder. This whole be being diagnosed with binge eating has been very strange and I think it's hard and confusing because think of it this way I am 500 pounds I have been 572 I have been almost 600 pounds you can't get that way unless you are eating large quantities of food is that just like massively overeating or is that binging for the normal person it looks like binging like when I watch 600 pound life and they show what they're eating I've never ate that much in one sitting. That's why I feel like the show exaggerates. But if they're not exaggerating, fine. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody. It's just confusing. And I find this part of my journey unfair. Then she decided to switch to a different weight loss program. And shortly after, she came on and said she was undiagnosed with binge eating disorder. I personally love this therapist um so this appointment actually we talked a lot about do i have binge eating what's really my food problems and what can we do to help with that so i don't i do not binge um therapist said so i say so i have had issues and i was very vocalized with this about this very honest about this in 2019 i had binging problems i don't eat that way anymore I don't have that same mind frame around food anymore. Um, but I think this topic is just safer off of my channel because I know a lot of people have different thoughts about it and it's just safer if I don't talk about it. But I am not a binge eater. Um, I do not have binge eating disorder. And obviously it's taken some time to realize that because with someone my size, I mean, I, I overeat, obviously. I mean, you don't become this size by just like kind of overeating, you know, <laughs> But just two months before she started questioning a diagnosis, she was still binge eating. A month prior to that, she explained that she was defeated because she had just binged on 12 servings of chocolate chip cookies and then went on a rant about how binge eating disorder was a brain chemistry issue and that she could not stop it. And I just feel so lost. I feel so scared. I feel hopeless. I feel defeated. I really, really, truly don't know what to do anymore. And a lot of people can look at this and be like, it's so simple. Just count your calories. For someone with a binge eating disorder, it's, it's truly not that easy. Binge eating disorder is a disorder, like a chemical disorder in your brain. Your brain is functioning differently as a normal human this isn't something that i just choose to be i know a lot of people heal from this i get that all the time 
you know, if I can do it, you can do it type thing. Or if like, why can't you do it? I did it. Like, I hate when people say that. Like, everyone is different. Everyone goes through different things. I turn to food. The issue here is that Emma has always described having textbook symptoms of the disorder. According to the DSM-5, the diagnostic criteria for binge eating disorder is eating much larger quantities of food than a normal person would eat in a specified time frame. What's making me gain weight is me binging at night, where I eat thousands and thousands and thousands of calories in one sitting. I was eating eight servings of white rice in one sitting. Everyone's binging is different. For someone, maybe going over 500 calories is a binge for them. But for me, my binges are 3,000 plus calories usually. So it's usually <laughs> crazy. And it's all in one sitting. And it takes me about, I want to say, 45 minutes to eat all of that. So I did the calories on the donuts, the Twix, and the chips and it came out to like 3,200 calories. I'm sure the bowl of pasta was probably about a thousand. So that's already 4,200 calories. And then the two ramens, one ramen is 390. So 390 times two is 780. So I had about 5,000 calories in one sitting. Usually I eat, I'm not even kidding, this is embarrassing, so much in one sitting from Taco Bell, probably around 4,000 calories. Binging for me is a uncontrollable thing where I eat probably around 4,000 calories in one sitting. Lack of control during the eating episode. I know exactly how it feels to be not in control of your body when you are binging. And I've just been binging. And while I'm binging, I don't enjoy the food. I am my rational side, my true side, the the real me, the cognitive cognitive side um is telling myself, "Stop. Stop eating. Like what are you doing?" But I physically can't stop. It's this overpowering sensation that I get and only people who struggle with binge eating will ever understand so I don't really want to sit here and have to explain myself what I experience when I go through it but it's really terrifying I feel like I'm almost being possessed and I know a lot of people who don't suffer from binge eating they look at it and they say no this is just a lie for you to eat eating until uncomfortably full my binges are painful they are not cute I I literally have different types of binges. Sometimes my binges are where I will eat until I'm sick and I'll still keep eating. Eating faster than normal. Like, okay, so do you know the characteristics and the differences between overeating and like binge eating? Yes. The big one for me is the mentality of it. But another one is when I'm binging, I eat so much quicker and I don't chew as much. I take bigger bites and it's just like like shoveling it in almost i know the difference between binging versus overeating because i'm a food addict or binging versus i'm eating in large quantities because i'm a food addict because when i binge i eat faster eating even when not physically hungry i literally hate food right now i hate food so bad but i'm about to stuff my face this is honestly the truth of what is about to happen right now i have made two tv dinners they're indian i will show you a picture right now feeling disgusted and embarrassed by the quantities of food consumed trust me i feel guilty for binging because it's not me when i'm binging like becky has been there when i binge and she tries to help me so i've been binging like every night and then so feeling really bad about it and i've actually seen you get very close to tears yeah. Because you felt so bad about it. And it's just, you know, people want to sit there and say, oh, she doesn't really have binge eating. <laughs> She's just saying. Honestly, I didn't even know binge eating was a thing until I met you. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's just like, after seeing what you go through. I <clears throat> am so regretful right now. And the guilt is like physical. Like, it's making me so guilty that I, like, feel it physically. I'm mad. I'm mad at myself. Full-fledged. Just really mad. But it happened, and there's nothing I can do besides move past this. Tomorrow's a new day. And finally, 
the eater doesn't necessarily purge. Because usually when people binge, there's a thing called binging and purging. I don't purge. Usually I'll binge on like 6,000 calories and I'll just keep that in my body. And obviously, especially because I do it at night, a little bit before bed, I hold on to all of that and it never leaves my body. And I just continue holding on to that. And I've been doing it for years, years and years and years. So taking everything into account, one of two things is happening here. Either Ember has looked up symptoms of binge eating disorder and used them to convince her audience she had binge eating disorder to excuse her failures, or she did really have binge eating disorder, but now that she wanted weight loss surgery, she revised her symptoms to a new doctor to get herself undiagnosed. Either way, her audience is being manipulated. Not only has Ember always used her binge eating disorder to explain her diet failures, she also used it to justify being mean to her girlfriends, Crystal, Destiny, and Becky. In 2014, she said that when she gets the urge to binge, her girlfriend, Crystal, knew to stay away from her. I know that when this happens, I always give in. I know that I'm going to eat whatever the hell I want, which <laughs> is close to 5,000 calories. Easy. Um, so... When I told Crystal, she had a look on her face like, um, no. Normally she doesn't speak up when it comes to when I'm like so like hardcore like wanting to eat because if you guys are a binge eater, you kind of know that you, you, keep, you do it in secret, you keep it in secret, but I tell Crystal everything, I'm with her all the time, so when this happens, she needs to stay away from me or she's a get it. Okay. <laughs> That sounded bad, but I just get really bitchy and stuff. Um, like if it seems like she's disagreeing that I should like overeat or binge or whatever. <sighs> I don't know what it is, but normally when she says that to me, that's when she gets it. And I'm like, I like, I like get mad at her. Like why? And when I say she gets it, I mean like, I just, am, I'm like rude to her. Like it's, it's not, it's not a good look. It's not okay. And that's why she really does speak up. In 2016, she was on Weight Watchers and attempted to eat cookies that were outside of her allocated points. Destiny told her not to eat them and Ember got upset. But then later, Ember called Destiny an enabler for allowing her to eat bad food. On Friday, I actually wanted some cookies. I was gonna, you know, do my points with them and everything, but Destiny literally told me, no, you're not eating those cookies. And I honestly got upset. I got mad and I huffed and puffed about it, but I put the cookies away and I didn't eat any. Someone asked, do you think Destiny is an enabler? And I don't want to sound like harsh or anything, but yes, I feel like a lot of people are and they don't even realize it. In 2018, Becky said Ember gets really mean when she wants to binge. When like the binge monster comes, like you do everything in your power to help me, you know? I know, it, I know it gets scary. It's hard. You get mean. But I'm not like mean abusive. Let You're not abusive, <laughs> no, but you get mean and we've argued about it. Yeah. Which is very common. I've talked to some people. Now that you say the binge monster didn't exist, how do you explain being mean to Beck when she didn't want to get you food? Um, I talked about this in my last live stream. Food addiction. Now that Emma decided she never had binge eating disorder, let's discuss food addiction as an underlying cause of her weight. I'm gaining weight because I am addicted to food. I am addicted to food depending on what i'm eating it gives me a high that i feel like drug addicts get when they you know do their drugs while food addiction is not listed as a condition in the dsm-5 it is defined in scientific literature as a compulsive overconsumption of highly palatable foods high in fat salt and sugar commonly known as junk food food addiction is an issue that a lot of people can sympathize with but the frustration with Ember comes from the fact that she consistently promotes two conflicting narratives by insisting that she is a food addict who can consume her addictive substance, junk food, in moderation. So as you guys know, um, I live the lifestyle of moderation, which I know a lot of you do, and a lot of you thank me for um, not being fake and kind of um, not hiding that part of me. So I do eat sweets. 
the fact that I'm eating so many sweets is triggering me to be more hungry. Um, I don't feel satisfied. I, After I eat it, I, I just want more. And I mean, I want a lot more. I am a morbidly obese girl who has an eating disorder and who has a food addiction. I will never be perfect and I will never restrict to that degree to where I'm not allowed to have a few bites of candy. I do eat candy. I do eat takeout. I do eat these things, but I eat them in moderation. Sweets truly trigger me. They make me binge, they make me crave more sugar, and that just isn't good for me. Okay, so I figured in this video, we try a bunch of random flavored Kit Kats. You know, just an excuse to eat some candy, cause like, why the heck not? Biggest trigger food, I feel like, is just like straight up candy bars. Like, oh my God. Some research has found that completely cutting out junk food is unsustainable for the majority of people in the long term. As a result, a lot of dietitians recommend incorporating junk food in moderation. However, this advice is usually given to people with other clinically recognized eating disorders, but there's not a lot of research showing that moderation works for people with food addiction. A study titled, How Do People Define Moderation? suggested that the idea of moderation can be counterproductive for people with food addiction because they can misinterpret and misapply it to their eating habits. Intuitively, the principle of moderation does not make sense for food addicts because the very issue that separates food addicts from other eating disorders is that as soon as they try to consume their addictive substance in moderation, their brain is triggered to want more and they lose control. Ember herself has admitted that attempting to eat junk food in moderation triggers her to binge. In 2015, she wrote a letter to her girlfriend, Crystal, which she later posted on Tumblr. Part of it reads, This whole no calorie counting, eat whatever I want in moderation works for so many people, including someone who truly inspired me, Kim from YouTube, who has lost over 100 pounds. But it triggers me into a state of desperation because I'm a binger. Then in 2018, she posted a video titled, I am done in which she described how eating various types of junk food trigger her to eat more. What else puts me in a negative mind frame and that makes me want to binge? Eating horrible food, eating chocolates, eating ice cream, um, going out to eat and like just gorging my face and whatever I want, chips and just, you know, fried foods and desserts and pasta galore. However, despite admitting this in writing, whenever her audience questions her for buying large quantities of junk food, she lectures them that she can eat it in moderation. I will not give up anything. I believe in moderation and I do not deprive myself because that is what makes me want to binge that is what makes me feel like i am closed in a cage um i still have sweets every single day i do firmly believe that for myself i cannot restrict myself completely when i lost the 89 pounds at first i did try restricting myself very very healthy very very small portions i didn't allow myself any chocolate i didn't allow myself any soda just purely water like that put me over the edge from someone with a binge eating disorder and a food addiction and emotional eater, like, I can't just do that head on like that. Like, no girl, not gonna happen because it actually causes me to binge more. Do you deprive yourself of any food? I do not. I feel like moderation is key. <laughs> Queen of moderation, hey. Um, another famous quote. I, I do think moderation is key in my journey. I know a lot of people can't really do that and I'm going to be honest, you know, sometimes moderation does trigger me, which is okay. I need to learn how to be around certain foods and be able to eat certain foods without having this crazy binge monster come out because this is a lifestyle change. So I do not deprive myself of anything. Amber Lynn's entire weight loss journey can be summed up into a revolving door of calorie counting and weight watchers. 
The reason Ember has been married to these methods, even though they clearly do not work for her, is because they both operate on one principle. You can eat anything you want within a certain number of points or calories. So whenever Ember does calorie counting or goes on Weight Watchers, she does not have to commit to cutting out her trigger foods. In fact, she usually allows herself fast food on day one. I love that you can lose weight eating whatever you want as long as you're under your calories. Like, that's great. So for my first meal today, I actually ordered Chick-fil-A. So before anyone says anything about ordering out food, don't do it, don't do it, I disagree. I will be, for these 100 days, there will be times where I order food. This isn't gonna be an overnight transformation. I'm not just going to wake up on day one and be a completely different Amberlynn Reed. This is going to be no walk in the park. We're gonna be swimming through a tsunami. There is gonna be some crazy hecticness before I can reach my goals. I'm constantly fighting in my mind with myself. And if I completely take away everything, then there's gonna be no success. Absolutely not. We will discuss her toxic history with calorie counting and Weight Watchers later. But for now, let's discuss her history of moderately eating her trigger foods. Let's start with her addiction to restaurant food. Going out to eat is not what's making me gain weight. What's making me gain weight is me binging at night. At the beginning of 2014, Emba was 377 pounds and she was starting a new diet plan with a calorie limit. She immediately added that she would still eat at restaurants. I guess these are resolutions, I don't know. But I want to try doing 1800 calories for as long as I can. And um, if I go out to eat, if they have low calorie meals, I want to train myself into choosing those low calorie meals because there's no reason I shouldn't. There's no reason I shouldn't, really. But if this place doesn't have that option, I feel like using my brain and getting something that sounds healthy but wait we all know that restaurants have dishes that sound healthy you look up the calories and it's like a thousand we all know this but i feel like we should use our brain a little bit and maybe if there isn't calories that probably does mean something right it does mean that there's probably not really low calorie dishes so what you should what we should do is or i i should be speaking for myself i'm sorry <laughs> what i should do is get that dish and you know eat half now and save half for tomorrow well two months later she came back and admitted that eating at restaurants triggers her to overeat even when i go out to eat and i order something healthy it still triggers me later on that night okay let's perform a quick logic check Amber said eating out does not make her gain weight, but binging at night does. But she also admitted that eating out triggers her to binge at night. So logically, if eating out triggers binges and binges cause weight gain, then transitively eating out contributes to weight gain. A reasonable thing after recognizing this trigger would be to cut back on going to restaurants but by 2015, Emma and her new girlfriend, Destiny, were eating at restaurants almost every meal. For like three weeks now, I have been eating out like every single meal. Destiny tried to talk Emma out of eating out so much, but Emma flat out refused to stop. I always tell her that we should just go home and eat. I'm 25 years old and I can finally do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> if I want to go out to eat, I'll go out to eat. She's right. I'm not a brat. At the end of 2015, she was near 450 pounds and she reflected on how she'd been eating out too much, but then quickly defended herself saying it's possible to eat healthy at restaurants. I know I said in quite a few vlogs back that I was gonna stop going out to eat. I'm sorry I let you guys down. I've been going out to eat far too much. I think we all know this. See, the thing in my opinion, there are healthy options when you go out to eat. There are tons of healthy options. No matter how you slice it or crack it, there really truly is. I know how to make a good choice. I am like pro expert at making good choices, but it's like I don't put that into action and that's something I need to start doing more. Emba has never shown any evidence that she's capable of selecting healthy options on a restaurant menu. 
Whenever she vlogged herself at restaurants, she showed high fat meals with high sugar desserts. The one time she allegedly ordered a healthy grilled chicken at a carnival, it was raw and her girlfriend's mom returned it and ordered pizza for her. So yesterday at an amusement park, I feel like there is a way to eat healthy because where we ate at, I saw, you know, I saw salads, I saw some fruits and I passed those by and I didn't get one. And um, I don't know why. I honestly don't. I feel like when, because I was doing so much walking, which makes me even hungrier, I guess I just wanted like a really like big substance and the first thing i thought of that is like a big substance that is healthy is grilled chicken and the place i was at had grilled chicken so i got grilled chicken i also got these like potato things i know not a good choice so i got to my thing and i was like okay i made half of a good choice i got grilled chicken but some like german potatoes i think they were called and i was like oh, okay at least i did half good and then I started, you know, I, like, opened the chicken, and it was completely raw. Like, I was turned off. I was like, are you f***ing kidding me? Excuse my language. And so, we went back. To, I was, like, total. I didn't want chicken anymore. Like, I was turned off. It was just gross, obviously. You're not supposed to eat raw chickens. You'd get really sick. So, the fact that it, like, turned me off and grossed me out and creeped me out, I was nervous to even eat chicken there. So, um, and... S Crystal's mom actually went up for me because I wasn't sure if they were going to give the money back and they used their credit card for that part. And so, sorry. So she went up and the, the lady said, go choose whatever you want. So Crystal's mom came back with pizza and fries. So, fail. I had a little bit of pizza and a little bit of fries. Um, and then later on throughout the day, I was like, I'm so hot. Like I was drinking a lot of water but wasn't peeing so I knew right then I was retaining water and I was like great I'm gonna be gaining weight tomorrow because I was fixing to get myself an icy because I was so hot so I got a really big icy pina colada I know freaking horrible and then I got a churro and then I had um a pretzel with cheese it was just all around it was hard because when you're when you do a lot of exercise, you do get hungrier. It's a proven fact. And since I'm at the beginning of my new journey, it was hard for me to control myself. By 2018, Ember was over 550 pounds and struggled to walk, but she was still devoted to restaurants. Even in bad weather, she found a way to make it to a restaurant. It was really bad weather today. We were actually going to go to a Chinese buffet, but we didn't feel like driving that far because the weather was so bad. It was raining so hard that the streets look like a river so once it cooled down just a little bit we drove a little bit down the road which was a lot closer than the chinese buffet and we just did some mexican takeout brought it home we ate that i've been doing nothing but watching movies today she repeated the words that she had said three years earlier admitting that cheat meals trigger her to overeat for several days but she still insisted that she would go to restaurants and order healthy meals day about six I think of counting 600 calories, I was like, you know what, I've been doing so good, I can trust myself, I'm gonna go have myself a cheat meal, it's not gonna turn into a cheat day, I can do this, I trust myself, I trust myself, I trust myself, I need to stop trusting myself, this is one of the reasons why I don't drive. <laughs> but since I trusted myself, I failed in actually truly uh, believing in myself, and that cheat meal became a cheat day. It became cheat days again. So currently in this moment, after this vicious cycle, I'm not on track because I have realized, I have realized that cheat meals aren't for me. No more cheat meals, nothing. I don't wanna be in any sort of situation that I know will cause me to fall off plan. And I know those situations now. Um, for me, a cheat meal is going to a restaurant and being like, oh, I'm gonna order whatever I want and just starve myself for the rest of the day. That's a cheat meal. Um, going to a restaurant and ordering a chicken breast, a plain baked potato, and broccoli is not a cheat meal to me. That is doable, that's a normal meal, that's healthy, you have your carbs, you have your protein, and you have your, your veggies. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just gonna do everything in my power not to have cheat meals because it, it completely messes me up. 
Two days after saying this, she posted herself at Cheesecake Factory, not ordering a healthy meal. Then after that, she posted herself at Yamaro's, ordering ice cream after an unhealthy meal. Then four days later, she said that she was going back on track with her diet, but then went to a Mexican restaurant in the same video. Then she went on an overeating spiral and came back saying how ashamed she felt because she reached a new highest weight. The next thing I want to talk about is my weight loss, well, my weight gain, really. I do have a new starting weight, which I've been telling you guys that I will talk to you guys about. Um, oh, I fucking hate this. I, I hate this so much. I don't know what is, I don't know if it's like because of the whole period situation. I, I don't know if I was experiencing PMS or if I literally was just, binging 24 7 I, I don't know what was going on with me but um oh god i weighed in <laughs> i don't even want to say it i i feel like if i don't change now i'm never gonna change and i will reach 600 pounds for sure two months after a shameful spiral she started speaking to an instagram dietitian and in the first conversation she said one thing she knew she was going to do was go out to restaurants and order takeout food. I said, here's an example of something that I know I will do. If I'm doing a 2400 calorie diet, am I allowed to eat Burger King? Am I allowed to go out to restaurants? I've gotten so accustomed to living that lifestyle that even when I'm counting calories, I'll find a way to eat there. Advice, thoughts. So I asked her this because that is something that I do do. If I am counting calories and allowing myself to eat pretty much in moderation or just kind of like whatever I want, I will choose fast food or restaurants over cooking at home. The dietitian recommended that she make minor adjustments to her diet. So a lot of people are going to get very angry right now because I'm going to explain to you what she wants me to do. And I know I'm going to get backlash. I get it. It's cool. But this dietitian has experience. So I don't need to sit here and try to have you guys like love her or like win you over or anything like that. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna be doing because this channel is about my life and this happens to be something I am currently going through in this moment. So she wants me to eat anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 calories. I don't wanna hear it from you guys. <laughs> Um, this is a dietitian, which you guys wanted me to get, and this is what she's telling me to do because at my size, just sitting here, if I literally sat here all day long, I would burn 2,800 calories just automatically. So losing weight means you eat lower than the calories you burn in a day. I explained to her what she knows that I eat out almost every single day, whether it's restaurant food, takeout, fast food, what have you. And she said, I am still allowed to have these things. I'm allowed to eat anything I want, but I just need to stay under my calories. But what she wants me to do is say I eat out seven days a week, cut it down to five or six. And Emma decided to eat from three different restaurants that day, including Mexican McDonald's and Burger King. I'm just like shooketh and I don't know what is going on. I am like so confused with life right now. This is not something you really want to wake up to, but my dietitian has blocked me. Emma's commitment to restaurants is so severe that she will cry about her weight and then immediately have her girlfriend drive her to a restaurant. Here's an example from 2018. She started a vlog saying that she was sick from overeating the night before. But then later in that vlog, she changed her story and said that it was not the overeating that had made her sick and immediately went to a buffet and bought McDonald's on the way back from the buffet. I started feeling really nauseous. Um, I haven't like peaked or anything, but I'm still really nauseous. This just, I don't know, it makes me feel like, I don't know, like I have the worst thoughts in my head. like. Oh, am I dying? I don't know. I think just a lot of people get to me and like any little small thing that's wrong with me, I'm just like, am I dying? So that's where I'm at right now. Like, am I dying? Because <laughs> I don't know why I'm nauseous. It really could be because I ate really, really bad yesterday. Um, I had Taco Bell and then I had Mexican and then i had a whole bag of 
chips and a whole box of gushers. It was it was it was disgusting, but I feel really bad. I'm having like heartburn, which I know is from the Taco Bell because it started after the Taco Bell yesterday, and I'm just feeling like crap. Look at me. This is an update. I no longer feel nauseous. I think my problem was I haven't been getting much sleep lately and I know that when that happens people like experience weird things and I honestly feel like that was what was wrong because after I woke up from my nap I'm feeling totally fine now. Next time you see me I will be at Sunny's and they have this like salad buffet type deal. I'm trying to decide if I want that or not. I probably will end up getting it, but the best thing they have there by far is the cornbread and the macaroni and cheese. So we're for sure getting that. So yeah, I'll see you guys in a little bit. In another instance from 2016, she posted a video titled A Fat Girl's Cry for Help, in which she complained about her weight. Then in the very next video, she went to a restaurant and ordered a large meal with dessert. I don't want to die. Like... <sighs> I understand like that is like the stupidest thing to say because everyone dies but it's like I don't want to die young. She also famously once prioritized going to a restaurant over staying at home and tending to a sick dog. I'm worried though like I can't I felt so bad leaving her. Oh but we're gonna go out to eat now too? Oh okay. The puzzling thing is that Ember has talked about how she doesn't even feel physically or mentally comfortable in restaurants. It's almost like impossible to fit in booths and I mean there's possibly a booth at this Chinese buffet I used to go to a lot that I can fit in only because I can scoot the um, table and this and that but even that gets complicated because the person sitting across from me is like like the table's like up against them so I have more room it's just a whole mess and I really never had to constantly ask for tables it's like embarrassing and I'm starting to really get self-conscious like when I order food I almost feel like the waitress or waiter is like judging what I'm about to say I want to eat and I feel like people around me are hardcore judging me. By 2019, Emma had become too overweight to leave her bed, but she still fed her addiction by ordering fast food. I feel embarrassed. I don't even like going in public anymore. I don't want to ever go out to eat. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. Like I shouldn't go out to eat, but it's like, you guys know I went out to eat every day and I don't even want to do that anymore. I uploaded a video like two days ago saying how like I'm not going to have fast food anymore and I'm completely going to change like my eating. I can't tell you how many people told me don't do that. And I know there's a lot of trolls down in the comments below. I know there's a lot of people thinking I should just eat celery all day, but those people aren't realistic at all. But a lot of people told me, keep eating out, but eat out less. Don't change your eating habits. And so many people, I can't even, I'm just like amazed with how many people are telling me to keep eating out. I'm, I was just like, I feel like I'm being pranked. So after talking to quite a few people, I have been replying to so many Instagram messages. Holy crap, that's like all I do. After replying to so many of you guys and oh, I appreciate your guys' advice and support so much, I have decided you're right. I can't change overnight. I can't, it's just not gonna happen. And so many people tell me, why don't you listen to our advice? Why don't you listen to our advice? That's like a quarter of the century. So I'm gonna listen to your advice. So here it is. The only reason why I got this is because I was craving it, but Eric always gets this from a restaurant near us. So I've eaten quite a bit already and I think I'm full y'all, but I wanna tell you one thing. The broccoli is the best part. Yes, she is a few months after her cancer diagnosis saying that she would still allow herself to eat fast food. I do eat takeout. I do eat these things. In 2021, she said she was ordering takeout up to six times a week. How often do you eat takeout nowadays? Um, I'd say about five, six times a week. 
by 2022 she was up to three times a day as you guys can see i'm eating takeout food i eat takeout one to three times a day it was estimated that Emba spends about three thousand dollars a month on takeout in addition to restaurant food Emba's other triggers include candy pasta and rice Here's Ember in 2014 giving her audience a tour of her snacks, which included a shocking amount of candy. Do you guys see all this? A big bowl of candy. Every day, this gets refilled practically with extras. This is always in my face. There's shortbread cookies. There's these... Uh, coconut butter cookies, there's almondette cookies, there's sour candy, there's peanut butter popcorn poppins, I don't even know. The healthiest thing we have are some pistachios. In that box, these are the ones that we have right now. And they were just sitting up here. I'm sure many of you are wondering why we have them upstairs in our game room slash whatever you want to call it it's because when we first wake up sometimes i don't feel like going downstairs because my leg really hurts and i gotta be honest sometimes i'm just lazy so it's just easier to have these upstairs for like breakfast and then crystal will go downstairs and get us a fruit and then this is just i bought a thing of cheese balls um moderation moderation and um we ate them. <laughs> it sounds so bad because it's so big. But between the whole house, we ate them. Sometimes she would buy sugary treats and say they were for her girlfriend. And once, she claimed that her girlfriend's grandmother insisted that she buy large cheese danishes. When we took Crystal's grandma to the grocery store, she was so funny. The whole time she's like, okay, whatever you see, just put it in the cart and I'll get it for you. Crystal and I were not going to get anything. And then she walked up to these and she goes, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. She put one in the cart for her and then she's like, I'm getting these two for you. And we're just like, no, no, no. But it was the type of experience where she wouldn't accept no. So we got two cheese danishes, one for each of us, she said. She's so cute and funny. Six years and 200 pounds later, Ember still had not done anything about a sugar addiction. And I have candy. I have Twix. I have Snickers. I have a caramel, simply caramel Milky Way. And a regular Milky Way. So, I will show you guys exactly how many I choose to eat. Um, each pack of these has six in them. So, you guys will be able to tell how many I've eaten by how many are left. So I'm gonna eat some of those. So I ended up having all of the Twix. Um, this is the stage where I feel guilt. I honestly was feeling sick because I ate so much. The minute I started eating the Twix, I just kept doing it. Um, and was continuing to buy large quantities of candy, claiming she will eat them in moderation. I eat a few of these at once. Like these are the snack size. So one of these will last me a couple or a few nights. It's a hundred grand bars. They're like my most favorite. So I just figured I would stock up on those. Amber wasn't even following basic advice to manage her sweet cravings. In 2018, her Instagram dietitian advised her that drinking diet soda could trigger sweet cravings. Shortly after, Ember showed herself drinking diet soda and said her girlfriend Becky had bought it for her. Then nine days after, she straight up said in a Q&A that she would never quit diet soda. Why are you guys still drinking sodas? Not trying to be rude or anything. No, definitely not a rude question. I drink diet soda. I don't think that's something I will be stopping anytime recently. Or recent? Recently? Recent? Anytime recent? Anytime, anytime soon. Anytime, anytime soon. 
<laughs> I need to go to bed. I actually have been drinking water about 90% of the time, but I will still have myself a diet soda and I'm gonna keep doing that. And she wasn't lying. There's a famous instance from 2022 where she spent $15 on delivery fees for a cup of McDonald's Diet Coke. I got Diet Coke. I spent $15 for this. But I will say that Diet Coke from McDonald's is liquid heaven, so... Oh yeah, that's totes worth $15. Now let's talk about Weight Watchers. To anyone not familiar with Weight Watchers, it's basically a diet program that assigns points to different types of foods and allows you to eat any food you want within a certain number of points. In theory, Weight Watchers encourages you to choose healthy foods by assigning them lower points. But as we demonstrated, when faced with choices, Ember almost always chooses junk food. She tried and failed Weight Watchers twice before starting YouTube, and she has failed it 14 times in the 10 years that she's been on YouTube. I think her toxic relationship with the program best illustrates the moderation trap for food addicts. Every time she quits the program, she identifies all the reasons why it's not the best fit for her as a food addict, i.e. how they eat everything in moderation principle of the program basically enables her to eat junk food which then triggers her to overeat. I said, Weight Watchers isn't the problem. I am. It's a great tool for anyone who needs to lose weight. My food addiction is running my life. Why I say that is because Weight Watchers works. It works. Um, it's a great, great, great tool. Like I said, I said it's a great tool for anyone who needs to lose weight. It's fantastic. It works. I can't stress it enough. But it won't work for somebody who has a problem with food. So my overall intake of this week is that Weight Watchers might not be for me because I feel myself messing up and binging every single day that I start tracking. Even if I completed a full day of doing really good, I catch myself binging. So I know that the last time I talked to you guys, I was on Weight Watchers. I was 593.6 pounds and I had lost 15 pounds in five days. So much conspiracy whether I was lying or not. I was not lying. I was very, very, very shocked that I lost that much weight. Um, so with Weight Watchers, it was allowing me to eat very unhealthy. It was allowing me to weasel in a pint of ice cream. Um, I had McDonald's 20 piece nuggets twice in five days. Um, so it was allowing me to eat very unhealthy, which I wasn't liking, but I was still dropping the weight, which was crazy to me. Um, I was able to eat, as some people quoted, huge bowls of rice and I was still able to lose weight. Um, it was just allowing me to be very free with my food, but for someone like me, it could be triggering. Um, after the weigh-in that I gave you guys, it was a Friday, and with Weight Watchers, you're allowed weekly points. I had about 40-something weekly points, and I was gonna use them that Friday. I didn't use them the week before. I didn't want to, because I thought it was gonna sabotage my whole progress. So I didn't wanna use them. But I was like, you know what, I just had my way in, I can just use my weekly points, which is allowed. This isn't like, I wasn't doing something bad. I was still doing the program. So I decided to go to Chinese food and I was gonna use the weekly points. Which is why they're there. It's for times when, you know, you're going on a date or you're out with friends or something and you want the food that you usually can't have, kind of. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna use my weekly points on this and everything's gonna be fine. That's wrong. <laughs> it wasn't fine. Um, I could not stop eating for the next like five or six days. I just, I was off track, gaining weight, I was becoming swollen again, and I was completely off of track because of that one cheat meal. So I have officially divorced Weight Watchers, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my god. I get it, I do. I just, when I'm on Weight Watchers, I don't know what it is, but I am like psychologically triggered into ordering takeout for my meals, 
just like snacks, junk, process. I don't know what it is. When I think about it, I go back to like the first time I ever did Weight Watchers. I was 11 and I was eating things like ramen. And then um, I ended up doing Weight Watchers again when I was in high school and I was just eating tons of takeout and like TV dinners. And it's like, I've always correlated Weight Watchers with that type of food. Then later, when she restarts the program, she talks about how wonderful the program is in isolation and divorces her personal food issues from it. She highlights how it has worked for so many people, which reinforces the false idea that she too can eat junk food in moderation and still lose weight. I've officially decided to join Weight Watchers because Weight Watchers really works for a lot of people and it's worked for me in the past. I just didn't stick to it, so that's my fault, not Weight Watchers' fault. Eric and Ricky asked if we wanted to go out to eat with them, and I said, sure. That's what I like about being all Weight Watchers, is there's no kind of off-limit foods, but it allows you to make healthier choices for yourself. I don't want to consider this a diet. I want to consider it a lifestyle change, and that's what I love about Weight Watchers is because it teaches you how to be moderate and also choose healthier things while still being able to treat yourself. And I honestly love that about Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is a great, great, great community of people who are just so welcoming and loving and the program works really well. So I joined Weight Watchers last night. I started Weight Watchers because the weight loss doctor kind of put me on a very, very restrictive plan. It was like seven to 800 calories. It was very sodium filled, filled. <laughs> it was very sodium filled and I, I didn't feel comfortable with that kind of restriction versus that kind of sodium. It was confusing to me and I felt like I didn't have any options of like venturing out and choosing healthier foods for me. So that is why I chose Weight Watchers because they teach you how to choose healthier things over non-healthier things while still you're allowed to eat in moderation, but if you're eating in moderation, the unhealthy things are gonna be higher points. You guys, Weight Watchers works, you just have to work it. That is the quote of the century. Weight Watchers works, you just have to work it. So what I'm gonna be doing is the good old, wonderful, fabulous, inspirational Weight Watchers. <laughs> We're going back to the Weight Watchers and it is what it is. It's just what I feel is right for me in this moment because they truly help you with Okay, let's let's eat a little bit healthier today I'm gonna teach you how to you know choose healthier foods and that's why a big portion of them are zero points like fruits um, low carb veggies, you know like lean chicken things like that those are things that you know, we should be putting into our bodies. And things that we shouldn't be putting into our bodies, AKA ice cream, which you can have, you know, here and there, like, why not? Like, if it fits into your points, your calories, go for it. But with Weight Watchers, they do make it higher points because they want you to, yes, treat yourself, like go for it, have the ice cream. But majority of the time, they want to teach you how to kind of have a moderate lifestyle. Amber doing mukbangs is one of the most criticized aspects of her weight loss journey. Her main defense has always been that she eats what she would normally eat off camera, implying that mukbangs do not incentivize her to overeat. My mukbangs have always just been me eating a normal meal. Well, here she is in 2016, saying when she does mukbangs, she tries to eat more than she normally would. Um, I just want to say, like, this is a lot of cereal. When I film my mukbangs, I try to eat just a little bit more than I normally would, because this, no, I would never eat this much. But in 2020, she did clarify this statement. When I make my mukbangs, I don't purposely like eat a lot of food. Um, when I do mukbangs, that is literally the meal that I would be eating. I have never binged in a mukbang before. Um, I think one of the first mukbangs I ever made, which was 2015, 2016, I did eat more than I wanted to because I thought that was like the point of a mukbang but ever since that point it's that was strictly just me eating what I would have even off camera I've never 
purposely been like, oh my God, I need to like get a lot of food and like make this seem super extra. Okay, let's accept her defense that during mukbangs, she eats what she would normally eat. So this means when Ember's audience sees her eating an assortment of fast food and mukbangs, they can reasonably conclude that's her normal diet, right? Well, no. According to Amber, her audience cannot look at one meal she eats in a mukbang and decipher the rest of her diet. Just because you are seeing one meal out of the, what, 15 I have in a week, how is that going to decipher everything? Do you get what I'm saying? And there are so skinny mukbangers out there they don't gain they don't gain weight at all um there have been mukbangers out there who have lost weight it is a thing it's not something that's crazy this would be a fair argument if there wasn't an established history where ember does a fast food mukbang and then a few videos later she has spiraled and gained weight so it's not far-fetched for her audience to assume that junk food mukbangs trigger her to eat more junk food off camera so today we just have some Amy's mac and cheese. Today we have some Pizza Hut. I got more. And then for the salsa, the salsa is okay, but I just use the chunky salsa and mild pace. So yeah, I haven't really been caring about what I've been eating or what I've been putting inside of my body. And that's that's not good, especially someone at my size. Like, I really know like your time is a ticking you need to start figuring your shit out and i know i've come on here several times and i've said this several times but there is going to be that one time when it finally is like amberlynn you can do this you got this but today black noodle soup we have fried rice for today so today i made pasta Wow, this is stuffed to the gills. We're gonna be doing a spaghetti mukbang. So this is actually leftovers from last night. Becky and I went to a restaurant we've never went to. It was called BJ's. We have our cheesy tots. And then we have a spicy sandwich. But I feel like when it comes to the weight loss community, I am a joke. I am a J-O-K-E joke. I can admit to that. <laughs> firsthand um but i don't want to make a big thing regarding this but i weighed in at 556 on the dot there are people out there rallying that i'm gonna reach 600 pounds by christmas crazy this is the taco bell tacos at home like a taco bar i have lobster rangoon you guys this stuff is so good and the sauce it comes with is like sweet love that and a spicy california roll i originally wanted the roasted wings but you guys they didn't have them i was gonna do a couple of these types but mainly roasted and unfortunately Oh wow, okay. That's a hill. All right. So I got something from Subway that I have never had before. It is one of their wraps. Hibachi steak. It is New York strip, strip steak. So, you guys. Ah! Something shifted inside of me and I just, I was eating ice cream and tons of rice. I never noticed, but fried foods, fast foods, restaurant takeout, like it was like unstoppable. Um, I stopped caring. I threw my weight loss out the window and um, I have gained weight from that because that's what happens. So today we have pot stickers and what we are eating today is Singapore rice noodle, which is so freaking good. This is what it looks like. I want to eat on a plate though. Plantain chips, which I'm obsessed with, which I got from Trader Joe's, 
and a pizza I got from Trader Joe's. Okay, so today we have lasagna. I am so excited. We have a 10 piece. And we also have some fries. And of course we have a Diet Coke. Can you guys even see? I got a chicken pot pie. Also, individual mac and cheese and individual mashed potatoes and gravy. And we have a cookie. Long story short, I weighed in today at 505.8. She said that her dietitian approves of her doing mukbangs. We get a glimpse of how Ember framed her mukbangs to her dietitian. She specifically told her that mukbangs help her eat slower. It's helpful to me. And I've explained that filming mukbangs is helpful to me. I've explain this multiple times um and if i was to be eating this meal like without filming it i'd be i'd maybe have like two left i'd be almost done i wouldn't be like enjoying it as much because i would just be like stuffing my face i don't know how to explain it but long story short um My psychologist supports me filming mukbangs. Of course, her psychologist would see anything that helps her eat less as a good thing. And so she told her to continue filming mukbangs. But if Ember had been fully transparent and said that sometimes she purchases piles of deep fried chicken for her mukbangs, her psychologist might be concerned about her eating a huge pile of fried chicken, even if done slower. By far the most consequential scandal in Amber's history is Shrimpgate, an event from 2019 where she came on and obnoxiously defended her right to do mukbangs while eating a platter of shrimp. Like, no matter what I do, no matter what Chantel does, we're going to get hate for it unless we are doing exactly what you told us to do. But you aren't our moms. You aren't our bosses, you aren't our dads, you aren't our doctors. <laughs> I just think the fact that people can hate on us so hardcore and judge us so hard over the food we put in our mouth is kind of crazy. It's a little obsessive. Well, in the days following this video, 10,000 non-bosses, moms, dads, and doctors unsubscribed, forcing her to issue an apology and beg them to come back. I just want to, like, apologize to everyone that I have, like, upset. I've hurt a lot of people, and it does surprise me because I didn't realize how many people cared because it's, like, I get a lot of hate, and sometimes that's, like, all you can see. And, um, yeah, I'm just... Sorry, and I can't say it enough, but yeah, I hope the people who are still here stay. And I hope the people who have left come back. And yeah, I'm just sorry. It might seem strange that Ember's audience had such a strong reaction to this, given her history of telling them off. But this moment was a boiling point of a series of videos. Eight days earlier, she had gone to the emergency room because she was scared her kidneys were failing. I'm actually about to go to the hospital, to the ER, because that pain is still there in my back. Of course, it's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's like a constant dull ache in my right lower back, kind of where you'd get some kidney pain. So I, for one, am worried and I want to get that checked out. Then four days later, she posted a video clapping back against hate comments. Amber Lynn, for F's sake, your head is buried deep in denial's a-hole. Your kidneys are failing, woman, because you neglected to remove your gallbladder stones, which can potentially travel down the kidney ducts and block them. Um, yeah, I know, duh. Two days after that, she called out two big reaction channels, Zachary Michael and Michael B. Petty. There are a few reaction channels that I watch now. Actually, I think only two. Let's be real. But both of them have something very 
much in common. Whenever I'm just talking about something in my normal life that isn't anything to do with my weight or anything to do with food, it's almost as if I bore them. Several times they've been like, oh, this is so boring. And then I question myself, I'm just like, why are you watching it then? Like if you're so bored and you're only trying to get the tea, which usually the tea is how much does Amberlynn weigh? What diet is she currently on? And what is she eating? They do get a lot of viewership because they're literally trying to just spill the teas and talk all this like crap and like they wouldn't be getting the views and they wouldn't be getting the love and support that they're getting if they were like sticking up for me no they're getting the views because they're literally talking crap and they're not gonna admit that they're never gonna admit that the viewers aren't gonna admit that no one's gonna admit that like it's just not how it works this has become such a mob mentality that it's just never gonna people aren't gonna admit to it like ever you say i'm in denial i say you're in denial then finally in the shrimp video she also pushed back against obese to beast a famous weight loss youtuber who had kindly offered to help her One of my most favorite YouTubers and someone that I've looked up to for a very long time made a video about me and I have been subscribed to this person for so long. His name is obese to beast here on YouTube and if you guys remember I have talked about him plenty of times and I watched pretty much all of his videos. I've been watching him for a while and when I saw that he made a video about me I got scared. I got truly terrified i was like oh no like because he is an inspiration to me he is incredible and he gives the tr the truth the real advice that you need to hear and that's what i really i've always loved about him and in the video he said that he wants to help me and if i was willing to reach out to him he would help me so i did i reached out to him because i was more so like flabbergasted at the fact that like one of my favorite youtubers is like literally talking about me and like wants to help me i was completely shocked so i did message him and he did help me and he told me what i need to do to lose weight and he didn't sugarcoat anything and he was very kind and he said that he's gonna be there for me and i am super like just inspired by him and i just feel very grateful that he's willing to take the time from his life to help me. She was happy with his attention until he made a video basically saying he didn't think it was a good idea for people to do mukbangs while on a weight loss journey. Obese to Beast made another video um, kind of talking about mukbangs, like obese people doing mukbangs and like mixing weight loss with mukbangs. So I personally messaged him um because we have talked in private before i just asked him like why couldn't you tell me like in a message that you everything you said in the video why couldn't you tell me so he answered obviously and then um he explained that like mukbangs shouldn't be done by people on a weight loss journey Because um, that's the only things that the viewers see. That makes sense and all. But my whole thing is like, this is, first of all, this is my life. I'm an adult. I can choose what I want to do versus what I don't want to do. So in the span of one week, Emma had fired shots at everyone her haters, critics, and helping hands. Then after all this drama, she made a video crying about her weight. Two years ago, I was able to do things that I just can't even dream of doing now. And it scares me that it happened so quickly. Like Becky and I talk about this all the time, that like one day I just couldn't. That's really what we say to each other a lot is just, one day I couldn't. And what we mean by that is like, this whole thing, like if you've been in my position, you know that like one day all of a sudden, 
you're 570 pounds and you breathe really hard when you walk for just a minute and showers become extremely difficult and you can no longer walk in stores, you can't go to the mall anymore, you can't go to the lake, you can't go do anything and it's just like one day you just couldn't because it's like it happens so fast that you don't even realize that it's happening and it's like I've lived two different lives it feels like and it's like this is the life I did not want for myself and I would fight for this I've, I used to fight for this not to let this happen and it did because I stopped fighting and it's like I try to go back and I try to see like when did this start when did I stop fighting and why did I stop fighting for myself I don't want pity it's just it's like I finally just need to just be honest and there's things that I want to talk to you guys about and it's just it's not because I'm ignoring it or anything like that it's because I need to talk about them on my time you know and I'm scared and I'm embarrassed because so many people watch me and I've done this to myself and it just is embarrassing Despite her continued failure to manage her own diet, Amber has always acted as a dietitian to her girlfriends, who much like her, ended up gaining weight. Um, a lot of people think that when someone hangs out with me, they gain weight. I feel like whoever gains weight, whether they're with me or hanging out with me or not, like they gain weight on their own. And no, gaining weight is not contagious. In 2013, Amber said Crystal gained 40 pounds in a year because she followed in Amber's footsteps and ate what she ate. She tends to follow in my direction more. Um, if I was to mess up on my diet, she would too. Um, that's why all the weight she's gained, I do feel like I am 95% the issue because I was messing up on my diet, so she was too. In 2014, Amber and Crystal were on a weight loss journey together, and Amber advised Crystal not to lower her calories because, quote, the more you eat, the more weight you lose. We were downstairs about to have breakfast, and I was telling, she was telling me that she already wants to lower her calories because she stayed the same two days in a row. She said that if she stays the same again tomorrow, she's really going to think about changing her calories to eating less. I don't, I'm not good with my words all the time. Sometimes I am, but trying to explain to her that it's only been not even a week and she's already down two point something pounds. I try to explain to her, she doesn't need to lose weight every single day. Just because you stay the same, even if you stay the same for five days in a row, that does not mean you need to lower your calories yet. Um, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of studies proving that the more you eat, the less, or the more you eat, the more you'll lose weight. So they say eating like 1200 calories, 1300 calories, even 1400 calories is not enough for your body. I mean, for some people it might be, but once you get stuck in a plateau at that really low amount of calories, if you eat more, you'll lose weight. I know so many people that it's happened to, and I tell them, up your calories. I swear to God, up your calories by 400 and see what happens, and they lose weight. I mean, I love that advice and that I can give it, and when I do give that advice, people look at me like I am insane. In 2015, she started dating Destiny, and she gained 25 pounds in the first few months they were together. But she did say she tries to offer Destiny nutrition advice because she's more knowledgeable than her. Um, the next thing is about my girlfriend, Destiny's weight gain, and if she's actually gained weight. Ugh. I told you guys that Destiny has not gained weight since she's been with me. I've said that at least a hundred times, but she has gained weight since she's been with me. When I moved in with her, or we like moved in together in our apartment, she weighed 181 pounds. And as of today, she weighs 206. So she's gained about 25 pounds. On her body structure, of course, that's really horrible and I feel really bad and I blame myself so much. 
I do. Um, she's never been a healthy eater though, I will say that. But I feel like it's only gotten a little worse since she's been with me. And I feel horrible about it. Like, I don't want to go into any more with that. I just feel freaking horrible. And I just, I want her to lose weight more than I want myself to lose weight. Because I care about her and love her more than I love myself. And when I see her eat something that's bad for her, it breaks my heart because she doesn't understand nutrition like I do. And I don't, like, who's going to listen to me? Look at me, you know, that's just how it goes. In 2017, she started dating Becky. By early 2018, they were on a weight loss journey together. And Emma gave Becky a meal plan to manage her blood pressure and cooked for them. I'm glad you kind of brought up your high blood pressure because there were a lot of people in the comments because I noticed Becky's face was getting red and stuff. Becky does suffer from high blood pressure, but she does have a doctor. She does have medicine. When in January, when I was cooking healthier, Becky said that, you know, her high blood pressure was, wasn't affecting her anymore. And that makes me feel good because I was giving you an eating plan that helped with something that you struggle with every day. Right. By the end of 2018, Becky reached her highest weight. I had Becky's permission to say this our starting weights for this and for the both of us this is the most we've ever weighed oh god i cringe saying that like if i'm like someone watching me if i was not me and i was watching me i would be like oh cringing i get it Ugh. so for becky her starting weight for this is 289.2 which is the most she's ever weighed in 2021 amber started dating feline who didn't show up on camera so it's unknown if she gained weight It is very clear that Ember is incapable of losing weight on her own, but she has also been unable to successfully utilize professional help because of several issues. One, she shops for doctors who can give her the opinions that she wants. Two, she withholds information from her doctors. And three, she sometimes outright disregards their advice and decides she knows best. My take on doctors sometimes is kind of negative because I feel like some doctors are also kind of lazy. In January 2020, when Ember was asked why she thinks she can lose weight on her own instead of seeking professional help. Why do you think you can make this change by yourself? It's not that I feel like I can make the change by myself. I just know that if I want it enough, I'm not going to need a dietitian, a nutritionist, a weight loss doctor, a trainer, a this and a that and a that and a this. Because it is possible to do things for yourself without having like a row of people there. Do I want one or two of those people? Sure, when I'm ready, great. But as of right now, like I'm good. Before we get into Ember's shifting narrative about weight loss surgery, I want to mention something that I found very sad. In February 2015, a thinner Ember Lynn posted an emotional video about an episode of My 600 Pound Life. She resonated with a contestant named Ember Ratchdy and said that she did not want to end up like her. I was watching My 600 Pound Life last night, which is honestly one of my favorite shows in the whole world. A girl named Amber was on there. It was a hard episode to watch. I literally felt like that could be me in a couple years. I saw myself. She didn't just have my name, but she had my struggles. We shared so many similarities that my heart was literally breaking the whole time watching it. I don't want to become 600 pounds. I don't even want to be 384 pounds. Well, shortly after that episode, Emma Rashdi got weight loss surgery and went on to lose 300 pounds over the next few years and still maintains her weight loss. Our Amber ended up closing in on 600 pounds and was approached to participate in the show My 600 Pound Life. Hey Amberlynn, I'm trying to get caught up on your videos as fast as I can, but I am reaching out to see if you have ever had any interest in weight loss surgery. I am a casting director working with TLC on a spinoff of 600 Pound Life that would take place in the South with Dr. Proctor in Atlanta. He's the weight loss specialist that works with our family is on and family by the ton. Let me know if you have any interest in sharing your story. Thanks a ton. Best. Amber Rashti is not the only person in Amber Lynn's life who got weight loss surgery and changed their life. 
her favorite grandmother also got weight loss surgery. A really big thing for me when I think of my family and my weight is my grandma on my dad's side. Before I was even born, she was over 600 pounds and she actually got weight loss surgery before I was born. I didn't even know they had weight loss surgery back then. Like that's so weird to me. I know that might sound like ignorant, but I thought weight loss surgery was like maybe like 20 years old, something around there. I'm 32 if anyone's wondering. So I always knew my grandma as a woman in her like low 200s, high hundreds. Um, the grandma that I'm speaking of is um, no longer with us. She was like my mom when my mom couldn't be my mom and I miss her dearly. Like more than anything, I wish she was still alive because of how close we were. And it's like, we have so much in common, not just the weight aspect, but she's also a lesbian. Throughout the decade, Emma has flip-flopped quite a bit on weight loss surgery. A lot of the times blaming money as a reason she could not get the surgery. A quick context on Ember's finances, from 2017 she started making decent income on YouTube and by early 2018 she was able to make around $10,000 in a month. So round ballpark, how much do I make per month on YouTube, it changes every single month. It's all about the views, however many views you get, but last month I made over $10,000. Then her channel continued to grow in 2019. And from what she's told us, weight loss surgery is around $25,000. In addition to blaming money, the frustrating thing is that Ember has gone to multiple weight loss clinics and they told her to seek therapy for her eating issues before she could get the surgery. But Ember would just get frustrated and quit instead of seeking therapy. Ember was first recommended gastric bypass by a weight loss surgeon around 2012 or 2013, but she said she could not do it because of money. But they came back actually completely shocked. And they're like, you have a bunch of gallstones. You have multiple gallstones on your gallbladder. And I'm like, duh, I could have told you that. I legit cried when they told me because they said if it gets too bad, you have to get it taken out. <sighs> they gave me a number for a surgeon, I guess like a cheap one or whatever, so... I ended up going there and he just told me, you know, it'd be best you get gastric bypass while you're getting your gallbladder out and all this stuff. And I'm just like, honestly, I don't have the money for this. I don't have the money for gastric bypass. I don't have insurance. So this just isn't going to work. So he told me how to change my eating habits, which was high in fiber, which the hospital is wrong um no fats like low fats because i have to eat fats then in late 2014 she made another video saying she would not get weight loss surgery even if somebody paid for her i have a few people telling me that i should be getting you know rny or just gastric bypass surgery just several different types of surgeries for weight loss um i would never and i mean ever get weight loss surgery Ever. And I mean that. I wouldn't, if someone paid me, I wouldn't even do it. Um, my reasonings. I give so many props to people who have um, gotten weight loss surgery. You have no idea. Like, I look up to these people. They are so motivating. And I'm just like, whoa. There is so many complications. Um, even if... You're losing the weight and this and that. There are so many different things that go along with weight loss surgery that I just visually see watching people's videos. I'm not going to say any names, but there's a lot of people who are losing so much weight from it. And that either can cause gallstones or even more an insanely amount of extra skin. Um, people get sick because if they eat like even just the smallest wrong thing or even certain foods that are healthy now causes them to get sick. Um, they'll go through dumping. I don't, I don't want to experience those things, um, at all. It's just, it's just not something I want to experience. And I understand that so many people's weight loss journeys from weight loss surgery is so positive and upbringing and just motivational and inspirational. And it's amazing. And I love watching those stories. But even within those stories, there, you know, there are just little complications and... It's like, what if I want to eat a small piece of birthday cake because it's my best friend's birthday? Or, you know, 
it's like, I won't get to do those things anymore. I know life is not just about food. Life is not just about food. Then in 2017, she said the only way she would be able to lose a significant amount of weight would be through weight loss surgery. And she was back to blaming money for not getting the surgery. I don't think that I could reach 199 pounds in 2018 unless I got weight loss surgery, which I don't have the money for. In May 2018, Amber said she would consider free weight loss surgery if she was ever contacted by My 600 Pound Life. Next question is, do you want to be on My 600 Pound Life? No, I do not want to be on My 600 Pound Life. No, I'm not trying to be on My 600 Pound Life. And I have never been contacted to be on My 600 Pound Life. But I will say that if I ever was contacted and, you know, if it seemed like something that I'd be willing to do, would I be willing to do it? Maybe. Who doesn't want free weight loss surgery? Um, years and years and years ago, I made a video why I wouldn't have weight loss surgery, but my opinions are completely different now. A few months later, she was contacted by the casting team of the show. She said she went through an interview process, but when they got back to her, they wanted her to be on a different TLC show called A Family by the Ton which she couldn't do because she doesn't have other family members near 500 pounds. Okay, so if I was chosen, would I have to move to Atlanta? Would I have to pay for surgery, etc.? That was important for me to know because it's like, why am I gonna go through all of this? You know, I know it's just an interview, but it's like, why would I wanna go through the interview in a chance that I would be chosen if, you know, there's certain things about it that I wouldn't like, you know? She said, so we would bring you to Atlanta for medical stuff. You wouldn't come out of pocket for anything. Is your medical insurance private or through Medicaid? And I explained, I didn't have insurance. And I asked if that was a problem. And she said, no, it wasn't because the appearance fee would be them paying for my everything medical. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. So I finally just asked her, when can we do the interview? And she was like, now, question mark. But a month later, when someone asked Ember if she's ever tried out for My 600 Pound Life, she said they messaged her, but she never messaged back. Have you tried to audition for My 600 Pound Life? You will lose so much weight there, not hate, just a concerned follower who wants the best for you. No, they have contacted me, but I didn't really um, message back or anything, so. In December 2018, when she got diagnosed with sleep apnea, she got very emotional and begged her doctor to help her find a weight loss surgeon. Like, I was begging for help, like it was... It was embarrassing and I looked over at Becky and she was getting teary eyed and the doctor was just like looking at me with sympathy and I felt ridiculous. I was so ashamed and embarrassed and I literally said the words, can you help me find a weight loss surgeon because I want weight loss surgery and I will pay for it. She explained to me that I need insurance because it is hard to pay just like completely out of pocket. I don't know, she had like all these like terms and I felt like it was going in one ear and out the other because literally I was hoping she'd just be like, all right, let's go get that weight loss surgery. Then one month later, after begging her doctor, she changed her tune and said she wanted to exhaust every weight loss option before getting weight loss surgery. I know a lot of people are like, get weight loss surgery, get weight loss surgery. See, the thing is, I want to try everything possible before I have to get weight loss surgery. So that kind of goes into this whole everything's about to change situation. No, I'm not getting weight loss surgery. I know a lot of people want me to, but it's like if I can lose weight without it, then I want to try that. I want to try every little nook and cranny. I want to go to every corner and I just want to try to, you know, lose weight that way first. Five months later, she went to a weight loss specialist who recommended weight loss surgery to her. He did start off by saying, you need weight loss surgery. And he was explaining how it's so much money and that I would also lose weight actually slower getting weight loss surgery versus not getting weight loss surgery. And he explained it a little bit more and he said that your best bet is to just follow kind of what I tell you to do and you'll lose weight faster. The thing is, this shocked me. He doesn't want me to lose weight super quick. Ember's excuse for ignoring professional advice has often been that they do not understand her situation. But the weight loss doctor is someone who had actually gone through weight loss himself. So he understood what it was like and also worked with a lot of patients in Ember's situation. I really want to follow my doctor's orders 
<laughs> my weight, I swear, like, the, I've, I've always wanted to say that. No, my weight loss doctor, I want to follow my weight loss doctor's orders because he's done this before. He has lost weight himself and he's kept it off for like, I think he said 15 years. And he has so many patients, hundreds and hundreds. I'm pretty sure probably thousands. I'm going to be real that he's worked with like in the past like ever since he's, he became a weight loss doctor amber only followed the doctor's recommended diet for a few hours then quit because the calories on the diet were too low and sodium content too high so i was just following plan and i was like okay i'm gonna do something he told me not to do i decided to go on my fitness pal and i decided to log my food on there everything that i was going to eat that day because everything was ready set and scheduled to go and I still had dinner to eat. So I was logging my food, doing my thing, and I was excited. I was like, okay, I could probably eat like this every day. I don't have to eat tons of fruit and veggies. Like, okay, if I could lose weight and not have to eat those, cool. Because I should believe everything a weight loss doctor says, right? See, it sounds like I'm being like rude. I'm really not. This is just like how I feel for me and like my body and my situation. But anyways, so I logged everything and my sodium was over 4,000 milligrams. I think it was at 4,600. I was about to say 46,000, I'd be dead. Yeah, it was at 4,600 milligrams. And that took me aback, especially because the calories. The calories versus the sodium completely shook me. It was like 720 calories. That was all I was going to eat every single day. Well, Charlie Gold tried the diet for a week. She ate the foods that the doctor recommended and found that Amber was misleading her audience when she said the diet was too high in sodium. Because I didn't want to look at it throughout the day because I was scared that would discourage me to stop. To be honest with you, I was taking it a day at a time. I didn't know if I'd be able to do it for the whole week. And if I didn't, I would have just came on here and told you guys, listen, I was only able to do it for four days. My body was not reacting well to all the sodium. That, that was the plan. It was just take it a day at a time. But then at the end of the day, I realized she lied. <laughs> she completely lied and I'll tell you why. My sodium intake for the day was 1760, not 4,000. And I had to go back to look, make sure I logged everything. I'm like, this is not making sense. This is not making sense. She then made a video saying that the doctor had told her that weight loss surgery was not right for her. So the first thing I found strange is that he didn't think weight loss surgery was right for me. For someone my size, a lot of people my size, they get told that weight loss surgery is right for you. This is how you're going to save your life. But he didn't want to give me weight loss surgery. I had told him I had the money and he still explained to me. He didn't think weight loss surgery was going to make me lose weight. In 2020, she went to another weight loss clinic and they did a comprehensive psychological assessment and then she was told she couldn't get weight loss surgery until she had gone through counseling and healed from her emotional issues. So I finally get a call after all the tests were done. Um, I had those appointments and I got the results back for the 398 questions. And it wasn't the psychologist who called me, it was someone else, like assistant or something or someone at the desk. And they said with my results, I'm gonna have to see a counselor. And so they were gonna forward me my results, exactly what the psychologist said, like this full paper, and they were gonna send me something to give to the counselor, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, okay, cool. I kind of sort of expected that. So it was a few days after that, I finally got the paper in the mail and you guys, I was so disheartened. Probably more than I can even uh, accumulate in my brain, if that even makes sense. They said that I need to see a counselor long enough to heal completely the things that cause me to binge. And I I've been told that a lot, that weight loss surgery isn't gonna cure binging. Like I totally get that. Like weight loss surgery is a tool and I wanted to use that tool. And I thought it would motivate me and help me. But when I got the paper in the mail, I was so disheartened 
because the phone call, they made it seem like, you know, I just need to actively be seeing a counselor, but it's not even that. They want me to thoroughly heal from these demons. And honestly, that's going to take a long time. So <laughs> I, I'm honestly very sad about it because I was going to get weight loss surgery. I was ready to even do it this year. When I saw the financial person, she told me exactly how much it was going to cost. That night, I wrote the check. In April 2021, Ember echoed her sentiments from 2014 and said the reason she never wanted weight loss surgery is because of the restrictions. And after getting it, she would not be able to use food to soothe her emotions anymore. In my opinion, and hopefully in everyone's opinion, um, weight loss surgery is the hard way. <laughs> it's the hard way to go. You're literally getting your insides tampered with. <laughs> like, literally. And there's so much things that you have to do beforehand and doctors you have to see, therapists you have to talk to. Um, don't even get me started on a two-week liquid diet, sometimes a month. Um, you're like literally going under like anesthesia, you know, like your whole life is going to change. You can no longer turn to food for comfort. Like that is the hard way in, not the easy way out, honey. Later the same month, she said she was pursuing weight loss surgery, but then over the next few months, she didn't give any updates. In October, someone asked if she was still getting the surgery. And she said she saw no need for the surgery because she is successfully losing weight on her own. The first one is, are you still planning on getting weight loss surgery? The answer is pretty simple. Why would I need weight loss surgery if I'm doing it on my own right now? Some people think I'm not losing weight as fast as I should, which I totally understand. But sometimes it's like slow and steady wins the race. If I can lose weight without surgery, then that's what I'm going to do. So currently in this moment, no, I am not interested in weight loss surgery. Then a month later, in November, she changed her mind again and said she was considering weight loss surgery. I stand by the fact that yes, I am doing this now. I'm succeeding in weight loss now. I'm thriving in that area, but it's like, what about my future? Sometimes I feel like you need to focus on your future as well as your present. I've tried this whole weight loss thing for literal years. First diet was when I was like, 11 and i've done nothing but gain weight like i'm not trying to knock the progress i've already made like i'm down over 73 pounds which i'm so happy about but there's honestly more that i need to lose i need to lose hundreds of pounds and i feel like i'm gonna need help so i have thought more about this and i did talk to someone really close to me i like to hear other people's like opinions on things especially someone that i care about and that i'm close to so am i getting weight loss surgery it's a possibility i currently am like taking the first step and i have a telehealth appointment with the surgeon in january i'm honestly super excited for the appointment if i do end up doing the surgery i will be self-pay so i'm gonna have to be saving money which brings a whole other like stressful situation because it costs around like twenty five thousand dollars and that number is daunting and terrifying in september 2022 she was asked again about weight loss surgery and she was back to blaming money for not getting it um a lot of people are like why don't you just get weight loss surgery um i've gotten weight loss surgery and it helped me it changed my life etc etc i would if i had the money not every single insurance unfortunately um helps pay for weight loss surgery or does pay for weight loss surgery which is unfortunate thankfully there is the option of switching insurances so that is something that i am interested in because i i have not been good with money in the past things that i know now um i wish i would have known years ago in november 2022 she switched insurances so she could get the surgery i currently just have so many hopes and like this wave of just like positivity run through me and I love it. I'm getting new insurance that is going to make it to where I could possibly get weight loss surgery. This is something that is really important to me. I don't know what it is, but I feel like 2023 
might be amazing for me. Over the next few weeks, she attended a seminar for prospective weight loss surgery patients. Then in February 2023, she uploaded a video titled, This is how I truly feel. I feel like it's super important that I share this because I'm sharing all of my journey to get weight loss surgery. And I don't know why, but I just have this overwhelming fear because it's like, I am getting weight loss surgery. I am going to do anything I can and everything I can to have it happen. But like, I'm scared. Later the same month, she said she was denied weight loss surgery due to her binge eating issues. And I had my dietitian appointment and she told me this is going to be hard to hear. But if you are trying to get weight loss surgery, this is within their program. Every program is different. If you are trying to get weight loss surgery with this program, you have to go a full year, 365 days without one binge. And that <laughs> it like broke me. It is at this point that Emma decided to get her binge eating diagnosis revised so she could get the surgery. So she switched to a different weight loss program, which prescribed her 12 therapy sessions and approved her for weight loss surgery in June, 2023. After getting approved, Emma decided not to get the surgery. All right, so I think it's time. Let's talk about weight loss surgery. So I finished my 12 sessions. I was approved by my therapist. I then was approved by my dietitian. And my next step, was to meet with the surgeon to talk over everything that I've done and to set a surgery date. I would say it's been over a month where I have felt disconnected from weight loss surgery, like I wasn't ready. And there is a lot of personal reasons why I chose this decision. I have chosen to postpone weight loss surgery. I know there's a lot of people saying that I was not approved or I was like declined. That is not true. There's a lot of personal reasons that made me come up with this decision. I am not saying that weight loss surgery is never gonna happen. I'm simply saying that it is postponed for now. Ember has a bit of a habit of hiding information from her primary doctor, or at the very least, not consulting her doctor before starting diets. Then when she wants to quit the diets, she contacts the doctor with the full information so the doctor can tell her to quit. She makes it feel like she only cares about her doctor's advice when she wants to weaponize it against her audience to explain quitting her diets. Let's start with the most basic example of this, Octavia. Then we will discuss keto. In 2019, Ember came on and informed her audience that she was going to do a diet program called Octavia and she received a lot of backlash from this. There were several reservations that people had. Among the top were the allegations that the company was an MLM, which is a predatory business model notorious for targeting low-income people. Other concerns were about the price tag and the quality of the food. It looked like a bunch of soups and snacks for $400. But Emma was excited about the diet. She said she had done a lot of research about the diet, and most importantly, she had consulted her primary doctor who gave her the green light. My doctor was totally fine with this program. I did talk to her about it. She was totally fine with it. A person who had done Octavia warned Amber that the diet is not sustainable in the long term. With this program, it teaches you how to transition off of the program correctly after you've reached your goal. And I don't think this person did that because they should have known you don't eat like this for the rest of your life. This plan is here to help you learn about health portions, helps you lose weight very, very rapidly. She forged ahead, paid $400 and received her box of food. On day three of the diet, she said that she felt great and she wasn't experiencing any hunger or negative effects. But in her own words, she was looking for an excuse to quit the diet. So she decided to calculate the calorie content of the diet, then phoned her doctor and told her how low the calories were. And of course, the doctor told her the diet was bad for her. So we were having a bonfire and everyone was sitting around with their hot dogs and their chips and their this and their that. And I'm just like, can't have any of it. 
Like emotionally, I was a wreck, but like physically, I felt so good. My mind and my brain was like, it's like a fog was lifted. It's wild. It's a really wild ride and it felt really good. But again, I was living in fear and I was trying to find tons of excuses to quit. I'm gonna be honest, I was trying to find every excuse to quit and I found one. So I got to thinking, I was like, how many calories am I eating in a day doing this program? So I logged everything into my fitness pal from day one and day two and it was only about 900 calories. So I got a little freaked out. I, I honestly was freaking out, I'm gonna be real. I'm just glad my doctor kind of was like, no, it's not good. It's not good for your metabolism. So glad that that happened. The big question from her audience was how did her doctor approve the diet the first time without knowing what or how much Ember would be eating? Now let's get into Ember's pro-carb anti-keto rhetoric. The ketogenic diet, aka keto, is a low-carb diet which promotes getting calories mainly from protein and fats. Ember has always stood vehemently against low-carb diets. In 2014, she gave this lecture about carbs. There's this person, I'm assuming same person that keeps bothering me, but it's whatever. Um, they're talking about how I'm not losing weight because I eat Doritos and Doritos have carbs and carbs are bad. Okay, I just wanna say one thing. Yes, there are diets out there that, you know, they want you to eat no carbs. I'm not that person. I will eat carbs, I will continue eating carbs. That is my life. And this person thinks that you can't lose weight by eating carbs. They legit said something like, how do you expect to lose weight if you're eating Doritos? I was like, is this person crazy right now? Like, are you from the loony bin? Okay, I'm not trying to be mean. And I'm not a know-it-all, but this <laughs> this is my journey. And in my journey, I lost 89 pounds by eating Doritos. Like, Carbs are carbs. There's healthy carbs and there's bad carbs and I eat both. I do. I really really do. And they were risky enough to literally ask me what um well how they word it. They're like, what diet program has um says it's okay to eat Doritos? And I'm like any diet program? No, okay, I didn't say that. I said Weight Watchers because Weight Watchers is a perfect, I, I said it's a perfect and successful um, example of you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. Um, I'm still going to eat Doritos. Like, who cares? It's a little bag of Doritos. Can you get over it? Yes, carbs are recommended as part of a balanced diet, including protein and fats. The issue is that Ember's diet is largely refined carbs such as candy, white rice, and pasta, which research has suggested that they are likely to spike blood sugar and crash it, leaving the person hungrier. Even in the absence of scientific research, Ember herself has admitted that she tends to overeat when she consumes these kinds of carbs. In 2020, even her mother was concerned about the amount of rice that she consumes. So then she notices, you know, my bad habits and something I never noticed. She said, you eat rice every day. And I was like, mm, rice isn't that bad for you. But I'm eating like big quantities of it. And I never noticed how often I eat rice until she came here. It's practically every day. And it's been worse lately. And you guys are gonna see that with the weigh-in that I put in this video. In August 2018, Ember was asked why she was against keto. I don't like speaking upon keto because I feel like there's a keto cult that likes to attack people. <laughs> I just don't think that any, if there's any diet out there, this is a diet. This, there's no way that's a lifestyle because if you can choose bacon over a banana, then there's something not right. There's a butter over a banana, a juicy hamburger over, you know, 
an apple like it's just weird to me it's very weird to me and i know i'm gonna get like highly attacked for this because keto has helped so many people out there lose weight which i am totally like happy for those so i feel like people are gonna take that and think i'm like totally talking bad about keto but i promise it's just not for me and it's not something that i can see myself doing and i wouldn't want to questions First one is, have you ever done keto and would you ever do keto? No, I have never done keto and no, I would not do keto ever. I know there's a lot of people who do keto and they're very successful with it, but it's just like not something I would do, especially because doctors have told me, don't do it. In October 2022, Emma was diagnosed with lipedema, which is described as a condition that causes abnormal accumulation of fat in this lower body. Emba was very excited about the diagnosis because she finally had answers to why she always gained weight so easily compared to other people. It just felt like I was broken, something was wrong, and I was right, something is wrong. The number one symptom of lipedema, lipedema, I know, I'm just bad at pronouncing words, is weight gain. No matter what diets you do, no matter how low of calories, you gain weight that is the number one symptom the knowledge was overwhelming in this two-hour session which i have another appointment with her next month which i'm already so excited for because she's teaching me so much and she made me feel so validated she was like you have troubles losing weight don't you and i was like yeah she was like even eating at a normal amount and i was like yeah it's because of the disease and it just like really shocked me and Feline like looked at me and was like, you know, like she, she has seen me through all of these struggles and it's just been rough, you guys, but I have a reason now. And now I understand that it's like, no matter what I do, I have something fighting against me. And that's the number one freaking symptom it's just so frustrating and I just feel like for so long people didn't take me seriously I would talk to you guys repeatedly and I'm just like you guys I promise like I'm not binging off a camera I'm showing you everything I'm eating the lipedema specialist told Ember that the only way people with lipedema can lose weight is by following a low-carb diet and prescribed keto to her I'm never going to get rid of this but what I can do to help it and to lose weight the best of my ability is low carb and staying below 50 grams of carbs. And I've never believed in that diet. You guys know that I've been in, <laughs> I have shared that I do not believe in that diet. I do not like the diet. You all know I've never taken low carb seriously. I've never done it, never actually tried. That's one diet I've never ever done. Keto, low carb, no. But I'm not going to these specialists to just hear them tell me to do something and me not doing it. I'm not getting these tests and I'm not seeing these doctors just for them to tell me something and me not listen to them. No, I'm going to better myself. Emma had said that her primary doctor had told her not to do keto. The question from her audience was why did she not tell the lipedema specialist about her doctor's advice not to do keto? It also seemed strange that a specialist would make recommendations without being privy to Ember's medical history, or Ember deliberately withheld the information from the specialist. Then when she wanted to quit keto, she consulted her primary doctor who told her to stop the diet. She posted a video titled, I hate keto. I just, for some reason, it felt so overwhelming to me to even just stand in the kitchen. And that was my day. Just fighting off the urge to like order takeout or binge or whatever it may be. And this is the first day that I've felt really just like defeated. Like I want to quit. Then a week later, she ate a family pack of chocolate chip cookies and quit this this happened um i ate this whole thing yes i did so as you guys know i was doing keto and in the beginning i did enjoy it um like the first week i will say and then i started noticing like i was just feeling super sick not in the sense of like keto flu because i know exactly what that is because i have family members like my aunt my mom you know they did keto for years 
So I know exactly like what keto flu is. This was all about my gallbladder, which, oh boy, I knew wasn't a good idea. Um, I always knew that keto was not a good idea if you have gallstones. When I was told to do keto, I was told to have very high fat. The lymphedema specialist said you need to do very low carb, below 50 grams, and you need to have a lot of fat, like 200 grams a day. I wasn't have any, like I was not having anywhere near that when I was doing uh, keto. I I knew that that would like <laughs> tear me up pretty bad. Um, I was having more fat than usual though, because I was eating like steak and pork rinds and I eat like a lot of low fat things. No, I wouldn't say low fat. I don't eat a lot of pork rinds and steak type of deals when um, I am not doing keto. It just felt like the main source of food I was getting was protein and fat, which is what keto is. And it was making my gallbladder hurt really bad and I was feeling really sick. I ended up calling my doctor and thankfully I was able to speak to them because I just, I needed like reassurance that it's going to be okay. I needed something and there wasn't any, unfortunately. They said that I shouldn't do keto. Some might argue that Ember had a valid reason for quitting keto if the diet was aggravating her gallstones. But Ember's disregard for professional recommendations extends to other small changes. For example, her fixation with weighing herself daily. In the decade she's been on YouTube, she has bought seven weighing scales as she grew too heavy for each one. The scale we currently have, um, my girlfriend's parents bought for about $150 for me because I was losing a lot of weight and then all of a sudden our other scale broke and um, it discouraged me and I ended up gaining a lot of weight. And so they got me this one. The scale that I have now no longer weighs me at all. And as much as I like that scale, I really need one that weighs me. My scale stopped working for me. It only weighed up to a certain amount. And I bypassed that amount. Whoops. Ordered a new scale that weighs way ahead of what I weigh. And it also talks to me, so you guys might be able to hear when I do my live weigh-in. So because I'm so much bigger, I can't just go into Walmart or like TJ Maxx and be like, okay, I need to buy me a scale. No, because most of those only go up to like 260 pounds. Some of them go up to like three something. That's pathetic. Like that is so pathetic. The scale that I have now is over three hundred dollars i did wait until it went on sale so i did buy it for around 160 that's freaking ridiculous i am currently using a scale that they use at like car shops to measure car parts like i did get my new scale today and i'm going to be stepping on that for you guys and you guys will hear the scale literally hear the scale say what my weight is I'm just going to start logging my weight with the new scale because it's like I didn't spend $80 just to let it sit there and still me use the old one. So I got a new scale. The scale that I have now I've had for years. It is super reliable, but it's super small. The width of it is not good, especially for someone with like really big thighs like me. I have really big calves. So I'm having to like squish my legs together while also straightening my ankle in a way that really, really hurts so my foot isn't hanging off the scale, obviously. There is a wide width um, scale that a lot of people have that are my size, but last time I bought that, which was last year, I mean, this was like August, maybe even before, actually it was before I hurt my ankle, so it's been like seven months. Um, the scale was so unreliable. It was making me 20 pounds lighter than I really was. So I said, okay, that scale is broken. Sometimes that happens, which is unfortunate. So I did more research and I found another wide width scale. I'm hoping it's wide enough to where my ankle does not hurt because I need a scale that does not hurt my ankle. We're not trying to do moving situations that make my ankle hurt. That's not the, that's not the thing. So I did get another scale off of Amazon. 
this one was not that expensive, which shocked me, but it had over 15,000 reviews and they were like all positive <laughs> from what I saw. Um, this was rated almost five stars. So it's the Eat Smart scale. I have no idea. I'm really nervous. I hate getting new scales. Super high, 550 pound capacity. So... Her obsession with the scale is so severe that she fusses over the smallest details that affect the number on the scale. I guess when you look down, you're adding more pressure to the scale, which causes it to kind of be like there's more weight than what there really is. So just a word of advice, if you guys do do your daily weigh-ins or if you do weekly or monthly, whatever, don't look down at the scale while you're weighing in because it definitely makes a difference. It's so used to me not wearing clothes that when I do wear clothes, it tells me different weights. So my recommendation for anybody is just to wear yourself naked if you can, if it's in the privacy of your home, because your clothes really do add on weight. I actually think while you are sleeping, you lose about 0.4 pounds an hour. Um, I could be a little off and of course it depends on the person. By getting such little sleep and also waking up a bit swollen again, and weighing myself a good like four or five hours before I usually would, being up 0.2 for me is a victory. So I'm totally fine with that. In 2019, the weight loss doctor specifically advised her to stop weighing herself. Oh, this part. <laughs> this part, oh my God. He was like, how often do you weigh yourself? I was like, you know, Sometimes every day, sometimes three times a day. Sometimes I'll forget to weigh myself. Sometimes I won't weigh myself for two weeks, you know. And he goes, he looks at Becky and goes, throw away the scale. I'm like, you're going to do what to my scale? He doesn't want me to weigh myself until I go to his office again in two weeks. But a few days after the consultation, Ember started a 100-day daily weigh-in challenge. Her reason for ignoring the doctor's advice was that weighing herself keeps her on track. Personally, I like weighing myself. It helps. It helps me, honestly. And I know a lot of people don't think so. Girl, I'm going to be weighing in again because he wanted me to throw away the scale. And I'm just like, I'm not. I'm not. I need to weigh myself. I am almost 600 pounds. I'm like 40 pounds away from 600 pounds. I need a scale to tell me I am not getting closer to that number. Like, that's what? If you see a weight loss doctor and they tell you things that are just downright, like not something that you feel in your gut is gonna work for you, because trust me, that what he told me to do might work for other people, 100%, but does that work for me and my journey? No. But nothing in her past indicates that the scale helps her. In fact, there's evidence to the contrary. Here's a compilation dating back to 2014 of Ember talking about how the scale mentally torments her and triggers her to overeat. I just want to say that I'm not going to be doing daily weigh-ins because I feel like they kind of like just mess me up in the head sometimes. It's mind-boggling to me how amazing I'll be doing. I'll rely on the scale. The scale will fuck me over, make me feel like none of this is worth it. I'm kicking my butt in the gym for nothing. I'm counting calories for nothing. I'm doing all of this for nothing and then I'll just come crashing down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh in every single day until then so that's 27 weigh-ins so tomorrow will be weigh-in number one out of 27. I know a lot of people don't believe in daily weigh-ins but I do. I'm just so shocked right now so I'm gonna get this over with. I want to let you guys know there will be no more weigh-in videos um, starting this year. I'm going to stop being scale obsessed. I stepped on the scale and for some reason it said air. There's no way I gained weight. I am on track. I'm eating my calories. I'm eating healthier, etc. It really, really just dampers my mood completely. The scale really knows how to get to me. I hate how the scale just decides the type of mood I'm going to be in today. It's very unhealthy. I've had quite a few people tell me, throw away that scale, throw away that scale. Don't weigh yourself for this long. Just don't worry about it. Because 
the most perfect advice you guys give me is that if I continue eating right, I continue going to the gym and working out when I can, and I continue doing positive things for myself, that eventually the scale will show everything that I'm feeling. And the advice is absolutely perfect. First thing is I want to weigh myself every single day. I know a lot of people have big opinions on this, but this is just what I want to do. I want to weigh myself every day. I want to see myself fluctuate. As much as I don't want to say this, I don't think I'm going to be doing any more daily weigh-ins. I think it's just very, it's just, it's, it's not good for my mind frame right now because I don't see a point in it, honestly. I feel like me stepping on the scale prevents me from binging. I'm very let down because of my weigh-in. That created an emotional day for me. I felt overrided by emotional feelings and I did overeat big time. I ordered takeout, so that means obviously I went over calories by a lot. And I've done really good the last few days and it's just like, I don't know, the scale put me in such a bad headspace and I know I shouldn't have let it ruin my day and somehow it managed to happen. And I'm like so frustrated with myself. The Instagram dietitian had also suggested that daily weigh-ins were not a good idea, but Emba ignored that too. The other thing that Ember's audience had always suggested to her was going to a rehab or an inpatient facility where all her food would be managed. In 2016, Ember said that if she had the money, she would go to a weight loss rehab facility in a heartbeat. You know, people have asked me before, like, if I could go to, like, a food rehab place or if I would go, like, to a hospital and have restricted eating or you know things like that and honestly I would do it in a heartbeat I really would I don't have insurance I don't have the money for that kind of thing but I wish more than anything that those things are free because I would be there but then when she started making money on YouTube she changed her tune um you could go to rehab for binge eating disorder cool cool but I don't need to thankfully I haven't really been binging when asked if she had a family member who had a substance addiction, would she urge them to go to rehab? And Ember said, rehab only works if you want it to work. My dad and my brother currently are still stuck in their drug addiction, and I love them so much. And I do constantly tell them to go to rehab. You're right. I have always said that. Even when I was younger, I urged my mom to go. Always, always, always have. And... The thing is with rehab, they have gone. My dad's gone, my brother's gone several times. And it only works if you want it to work. Like, of course, there's a very high chance you're gonna be sober in rehab, but then what happens when you're out of rehab? It's just a messy situation, it's a sticky situation. And I think for a lot of people who don't struggle with addiction, telling us to go to rehab is just like a very easy thing to say and it's a lot more harder to actually do now that we have heard why ember thinks all the other professional advice is wrong for her let's talk about her favorite weight loss method calorie counting there are four main issues with ember's approach to calorie counting but before we get into them let's discuss her 89 pound weight loss i've lost 89 pounds my way and i don't expect anyone else to look down on my way the 89 pound weight loss from 2011 is something that ember always touts as proof that she knows how to lose weight but her story about how she lost the weight has changed a few times in 2014, Ember posted a video lamenting her failure in her weight loss journey. Audi Adidas commented, You have to track food. Call it calories, call it macros, call it Weight Watcher points, whatever. You won't lose weight just guesstimating. Good luck, Ember Lynn. You are a good person. Ember responded that she lost 89 pounds without counting calories. But later that year, when she was being criticized for eating junk food, she said that she lost the 89 pounds by eating unhealthy food while counting calories. I do go back to the point where, yeah, I lost 89 pounds myself. I did that all by myself. No surgery. It was literally cold turkey. 
Um, the only thing about that situation was I did not eat healthy. I ate TV dinners. I literally ate like a thousand calories and purely snacks at night. I was not healthy, but I just ate less. And I did. I lost 89 pounds. It goes to show that when you're trying to lose weight, a calorie is a calorie. And I will 110% say that until I'm dead in the face. Like, a calorie is a calorie. It's just a calorie if you're trying to lose weight. Because I did. I would just eat TV dinners, which are jam-packed in sodium. You have no idea. Chemicals up the yin-yang. And I would eat chips. I would eat chocolates. I would eat just bars. I would eat uh, ice cream. That is what I would eat every single day. And I lost weight because I was counting calories. And I lost 89 pounds. Then in 2017, she said she lost 89 pounds by obsessively counting calories. Any weight loss tips slash body positive tips, weight loss tips, honestly, everyone loses weight differently. What works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. Um, that's just really the reality of it. I know a lot of people say do low carb, low fat, like count calories, go vegan. Everyone does it different. I just know from firsthand how I lost weight in the past. If you guys didn't know, I have lost 89 pounds in the past. Um, and how I did that was really just eating less. Um, I did a lot of calorie counting. Probably a little, little bit too much, but I did do a lot of calorie counting and I became extremely obsessed with it. And that's how I was able to lose the weight. In 2018, when she was speaking to an Instagram dietitian, she said she didn't really count calories when she lost 89 pounds. And she goes, I know you previously lost a good chunk of weight, so you at least know you're, what you're doing. How many calories were you eating then? And I kind of opened up to her about something that I haven't really shared with you guys, and I guess you're going to find out now. But I said I didn't really count calories. But looking back now, in the very beginning, it was probably no more than 900 calories a day. This was eight years ago. I knew absolutely nothing about nutrition or calories then. Then in 2019, she released a video titled, The Truth About How I Lost 89 Pounds in which she said she knew nothing about calories when she lost the 89 pounds. On October 24th, 2011, when we set out to be healthier, skinnier, better versions of ourselves, I knew nothing about nutrition back then. I didn't know anything about calories. I didn't know anything about serving sizes. It's like I went through all these diets as a teenager, but I never learned how much is too much? How much is too little? It's because my go-to was always, honestly, it was Weight Watchers. And with Weight Watchers, like, it's great, but it doesn't teach you about anything about calories. So I didn't really know anything about calories. I didn't really know much about nutrition. I kind of just followed point plan and that was it. And I know there's people out there who are like, oh my god, I hope she does keto. I hope she does low carb. I hope she does veganism. Like, I know everyone has their specific diet that works for them and I totally get it, but I want to do what really works scientifically. Calories in, calories out. Super simple. Emma has talked many times about how the process of measuring and tracking her food triggers her to overeat, but she also insists that calorie counting is the best method for weight loss. Like this is purely just like my January goals is counting calories. No normal soda. I can eat whatever I want. So what am I going to be doing to lose weight this time? I think I'm just taking like a very different approach to it. I will not be counting calories. I will just be eating mindfully. And I feel like that's really important because counting calories is not a lifestyle change. <laughs> a lot of the time when I say like, oh, I'm going on a diet, people try to correct me and say, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change. But no, it technically is a diet when you're counting calories. And I really feel like it's important to find a substantial way of living. And I feel like if I want a lifestyle change and not a diet, something that I can honestly come home to and wake up to and enjoy, it's mindful eating, not constantly counting calories, constantly weighing my food. But I'm going to be doing 2,000 calories of any food that I want. Um... I don't want to do too many restrictions, so 2,000 calories is already a restriction for someone my size, so let's just do that one restriction and just allow myself to eat whatever, but still stay under 2,000 calories. 
I'm not gonna count calories. Counting calories is very, very, very bad for someone with a disorder like I have because it makes you think of food too much and then you feel restricted too much and that's when you binge. So my plan for this week is gonna be super simple, keeping it, you know, 100 and just like how I lost weight before. I'm just gonna count calories. I am giving myself a 2000 calorie limit. So the reason why I don't count calories or anything like that is because it is a complete trigger for me. It just, it makes me obsess over numbers. And when I start obsessing over numbers, it's, I'm done. I'm, I'm, nope. Something in my brain just does not correlate together. So I actually lose the most weight when I do intuitive eating. I know a lot of people don't believe in that. It's fine. I think it's just because I have counted calories for so long and it just never worked because it's always me obsessing, obsessing, obsessing so triggering so restrictive and i know obviously you need to restrict to lose weight that is pretty much the bottom line on that that's the, that's the science in 2022 a psychologist from the eating disorder outpatient program told her not to count calories i am not going to count calories because that is exactly what my psychologist says do not do but emma decided to quit the program because she disagreed with the recommendation Quitting outpatient makes me feel empowered. Like I feel so empowered and I wanna explain why. So going to outpatient and assuming that I am powerless over an eating disorder is not going to help with my weight loss. I was in a outpatient program of health at every size where they didn't wanna talk about weight loss. They said it was, you know, part of the eating disorder and it's triggering. Um, they didn't want me counting calories. They didn't want me say no to takeout. They didn't want any of that. That's something I have discussed with you guys before. Um, they say if you're craving seafood boil, have seafood boil. If you're craving a cheesy hamburger, have cheesy hamburger. And... It just made me feel powerless because it's like I was fighting so hard to like get away from that. She always insists on setting a very low calorie limit, then exceeds it by a lot. In February 2014, she set a calorie limit of 1,800. Then on day two, she exceeded that limit by 1,600. And on day five, she exceeded it by 2,100. I don't know if I'm gonna call this attack of the pizza, to be honest because it wasn't attack of the pizza it was attack of everything um i honestly don't know why i'm doing this i just don't and it's it's embarrassing to come on here and admit this and people are gonna watch this and really look down on me they're not gonna you know I just, some people don't understand the issues that I went through my whole life, and I don't know. I'm feeling very down, and the more I talk about it, I think the worse it makes me feel. A reasonable mental process here would be to either reevaluate calorie counting as a method of weight loss or increase her limit. But Emma decided to reduce her calorie limit to 1,500. Naturally, she failed to stick with this limit. Then three months later, in May 2014, after failing her previous 1,800 limit, she decided to set a limit of 1,600. When a viewer named Kemi805 advised her that lowering her calories too much would send her body into starvation mode, Emma said the calorie limit was perfectly fine and it worked for her. The very next day, she had a cheat day and allowed herself to eat whatever she wanted. That cheat day extended to the weekend and she gained weight. I just think for my journey right now, I'm going to A, lower my calories. I find that I have such a high calorie limit that at night, 
sometimes I struggle to find what to eat and I'll eat the wrong things because I have extra calories. Three years later, in April 2018, my fitness pal recommended 2,700 calories, but Ember said 2,200 calories was better for her. So my calorie limit on my fitness pal, they want me to eat 2,700. I think that's too high. I did the TDEE. Um, you guys can just look that up. That's mainly what people look at to find out how many calories they need to eat to maintain a weight and then you subtract about 500 to a thousand to lose weight um on there it says to maintain my weight i need to eat a little bit over 4,000 calories a day which makes a lot of sense to me and so that means i subtract about 500 to a thousand which would bring me at 3,500 or 3,000 and for me i feel like that's still too much um so i'm just gonna tell myself no eating over 2200 calories i feel like 2200 calories is pretty sustainable especially with how much um i've been walking and stuff i'm gonna be honest with you guys i have ate a little bit more than 6,000 calories today um this journey and this challenge isn't meant to just be amazing like it don't work that way um I can't just wake up overnight and be a completely different girl. But what I think is different about this is normally when I mess up, I, I beat myself up so much that the, ne that the next day, um, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to mess up again. I'm going to mess up again. But something about right now, I just feel, you know, a lot better. Like, we went to freaking Spencer's. I had a great day today. Two months later in June 2018, she decided to go on a 1,600 calorie plan and said she did not want any input from her audience. So my plan of action for now is to go back to 1,600 calories a day. Please, nobody give me advice on it because I don't really care. I know that comes off harsh and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to share this with anybody is because everyone has an opinion. Everybody and everybody wants you to do their diet. Yes, we are going to the Cheesecake Factory. I'm done counting calories. I am done doing Weight Watchers. I am done. In November 2018, a dietitian told her to eat 2,500 to 3,000 calories, but Ember was concerned this limit was too high. Um, Something I even said to her, I was like, is it normal for me to feel like super scared eating this many calories? Because I feel like this many calories will make me gain weight. She explained to me that this is like totally normal. It's a normal feeling, but at my size, I will lose two pounds weekly doing it like this. In February 2019, Obese to Beast, a famous weight loss channel, advised Ember to eat 2,800 calories but Ember decided she would eat 2,600 and failed. He was able to help me figure out how many calories that I need to eat a day to lose weight. And he said 2,800 to 3,000. So that's also a lot of calories. So I told him I might just aim for 2,600. And this is all the same information that I got from past nutritionists. Like it's like his knowledge and everything that he's told me is pretty much the exact same as like past nutritionists have told me. In March 2021, her TDEE calculator recommended that she eat 2,400 calories, but Ember said that would not work for her and decided she would eat 1,800. Then on that day, she ended up eating 2,600 calories. So I ended up ordering takeout again and I knew I was making a bad decision as I was doing it, but it's like, I kept telling myself, you're still gonna count calories. Even if you go over on the first day, it's totally fine. Because as long as you're eating like below 3000 calories, you're gonna lose weight, yada, yada, yada. I kept talking myself into it. And so I did it. I got a pasta that simply just had some butter and some seasonings. And if you look at the picture here, this is the picture I took. And I only ate a three fourth of that. And then I also ordered a side of mashed potatoes. So in total, it was, 1,150 calories and so from the food that I had earlier my calories now we're at 2,470 so I was 670 calories over limit and I wrote I failed but I'm okay that after she sets the low limit and exceeds it she still congratulates herself for at least logging the calories she considers logging a success even if she didn't stick to the limit 
In 2019, she was proud of herself because she counted calories for 29 days, even though she didn't stick with the limit and didn't lose any weight. The 29th day of doing this in a row, what I've been doing is actually counting calories and I've been doing them whether I'm on track or off of track because I am curious for my body, like how many calories I need to gain weight, maintain, and lose weight because everyone is different no matter what. Like someone next to me could weigh the exact same amount they could literally be the exact same height and everything, but it would just be different because we're two different people. So I've been like doing that. It's like my little experiment and I'm really proud because 29 days is a long time to be doing that. K Bell commented, you realize that counting calories and reducing calories aren't the same thing, right? In 2016, Ember posted a video titled, I know how to count calories, I'm not an idiot. And for some reason, a lot of people in the comments are questioning if I know how to count calories or not, which is quite annoying because, yes, I am morbidly obese, but I am the pro at counting calories. A bodybuilder named Chikara Transformations has a series of videos where she counts calories in Ember's meals and shows that Ember constantly underestimates her calories. What do you think the reason is for your weight gain these last few years? Freedom, money. As the audience watched Amber sabotage every weight loss plan, questions began to emerge about whether she was sincerely trying to lose weight. A lot of people in the Emberverse believe that Amber's primary goal is to exploit her weight for YouTube money. A user named Pam commented, she's brilliant. She knows how to get views. She's not about weight loss. She's about money and view gains. People think that I'm actually gaining weight for views, and I think that is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. It's absolutely not true. Charlie Gold specifically accused Ember of appealing to feeders. There's only two people who's going to enjoy this video. Feeders and Amberlynn, and that's because she's going to make a boatload of money from it. I'm going to show you the inside of this. Mm. Come on with the sound. She's been making these sounds this whole video. It's disgusting. This whole video is for feeders. After denying it for years, in 2021, she finally admitted that around 2016, she noticed that she got more views when she ate on camera and showed her body. So she started trolling and eating more. What is the most degrading thing you've ever done for money? Hmm. I'm probably going to say the era when i was with destiny um we lived with her mom i was going through like major depression i was at a very low point in my life i just started making really good money on youtube and i noticed hmm the more i show my body the more i eat the more views i get so i was super extra and i had this huge bowl of captain crunch in a mukbang and then there was one where i walked down the steps and i made it seem like super hard for me that was all trolling her audience would point out that she intentionally selects thumbnails where she looks as fat and as gluttonous as possible for shock and clicks when i noticed that i was being watched more when i had certain types of thumbnails then I would lean into that and I would make that like my thing. When she was contacted by the casting team of My 600 Pound Life in 2019, they told her to send unflattering photos of herself looking big because that would make her more appealing to the TLC network team. And Emma said she understood what they meant and had a lot of pictures to send them. And then she had me send her a bunch of photos of just me kind of looking big. She also told me before I sent her the photos, she's like, this sounds awful, but make them look as unflattering as possible. Strengthens your case. And I totally, I totally understood that. So I had a lot of pictures that I could send her. So um, I sent her a ton of photos. She has also admitted that she knew if she lost weight, she would lose her audience. I do get people asking me um, quite a lot. Do I think I'm going to lose viewers? by getting weight loss surgery and honestly yes i without a doubt think that um people's downfall is a lot more entertaining than their glow up 
Um, people like drama. People like train wrecks. And by me losing weight, I will lose re viewership. I will. <laughs> it's that simple. Some people argue that it's her body, so it's no one's business if she wants to exploit it for money. And that is true. But the manipulative aspect of her behavior is that she continuously cries to her audience about how desperately she wants to lose weight. And this elicits sympathy from people who genuinely care and want her to succeed. Then some people such as Obese to Beast and the Instagram dietitian have reached out to Amber and offered to help her for free. So if Amber's primary focus is eating and using her large body to generate clicks, then she wastes both their time and emotional investment. In addition to wasting people's time, she also makes it hard for other fat people's genuine struggles to be taken seriously as pointed out by another weight loss channel called Life by Jan in 2018. Like I said, the people that I'm talking about are the ones that actually had no intention of, of losing weight, of only came, coming here to make money off of trolls, of views, and that's it. There's one person in particular I'm speaking about. I know that there is more than just one person, but this is the one specific person that I'm speaking of. I'm not going to name names. Um, but I started following this person at least a couple of years ago. And at the time, she she's a very happy-go-lucky person. I loved her, her personality. I saw a lot of myself in her as a younger person. I could relate to what she said she was going through, what she went through in her younger days, I related a lot to her. I've never had a conversation with her. I've left comments on her videos, but I've never had a conversation with her. She's, to my knowledge, she's never replied to a comment of mine. So it's not like we were friends and it just went bad or something. I've just been a viewer, that's it. So over the years, the couple of years that I followed her, she had a, a big following when I started following her to begin with, but she started gaining more and more followers. And more and more people started saying that she was fake and she was lying. And then she started getting a lot of trolls. And I felt bad for her. I thought those people were just hating on her and that she was just having a hard time. And then I started reading the comments and I started wondering if maybe they were real, if they were, if they were being honest and if it was true. And in the last couple of weeks, I can tell that it's very obvious now that she is only here to make money off of this community. And that makes us all look bad. It makes us look like we are only here for views and to make money, which is not true. She has made a mockery of saying she was on a diet. Then like she'll start her video saying she's on a diet and she'll end her video at a fast food restaurant eating a ton of food. I understand that we all do fall off and we eat bad things that's understandable but this person does it on a daily basis and then she goes out and spends large amounts of money on material objects and she just flaunts the fact that she's making a lot of money and it's very obvious so it's making us all look bad she's making us all look bad people like her are making us all look bad we are here i am here because i want the support it really bothers me that there are people out there who make us look bad and you have to, it makes people wonder who's being honest and who's not because I thought she was being honest for a very long time. And it's hard to trust people on the internet to begin with. So when you get to a point where you don't know who's being real and not, I think that that just hurts all of us in the long run. So I would encourage everyone to be honest while you're here. If you're here just to make money, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But just be honest and don't mislead people that want to support you and that want to be there for you and then find out that they've just wasted their time supporting you because you don't want the support. And I hate the blaming your audience for your poor decisions. Because I feel like when people say that, they don't understand eating disorders or they don't even understand the simplest thing of emotional eating. 
a lot of people eat their feelings and that's just that's not just me there are certain things that trigger emotional eating or binging youtube as a whole does not trigger me it's when i start becoming bombarded with the negativity why amber's audience has been blaming youtube money as a reason amber has not lost weight amber has been pointing fingers at her audience and blaming them for making her overeat just eight months after starting her weight loss channel she said that she noticed that youtube made her binge eating worse because of the backlash that she received online <laughs> i noticed something um i actually kept this to myself i didn't even tell my girlfriend but i noticed my binge eating was actually getting worse once i started youtube because i was getting rude comments on ask fm so i feel like that's a trigger for me because when i'm being bullied it's not okay it causes sadness depression this and that so i'm just done so you can understand where i'm coming from i started my weight loss journey on youtube um years ago and something i've learned from then till now is that sharing my journey does not help me at all it actually overwhelms me and it makes me feel worse about little stupid things like eating corn eating corn um i grocery hauled some corn and <laughs> i ate some corn i ate some brown rice and all those things are technically healthy but when you go on youtube they're not and that makes me feel down on myself i get a lot of negative comments about eating corn a lot of people think they're giving me tough love in the comments but really when i see mean things being said about me this is no excuse at all this is by far an excuse this is me opening up to you guys that the tough love makes me want to binge it makes me want to binge eat uh really bad and some people think that they can do some type of reverse psychology on me and that their tough love will be the tough love that I needed to better myself. But in actuality, it just makes me worse. I need to work on myself. I need to work on my physical. I need to lose weight. And it's like, I can't do all those things when people are telling me to die. When people are telling me I'm a whale, I'm gross. Look at her knuckles. It's like making fun of someone's appearance is not okay. It's never okay. It's never justified. There has been situations and moments in my YouTube career, if you will, where the comments have mentally destroyed me. And during that process of me being just super destroyed, for the lack of a better word, I turned to food. I felt super broken and for some reason food put me back together. Despite everything you have just heard Ember say about how YouTube impacts her weight, whenever her supporters advise her to leave YouTube and save her life, Ember changes her tune and says that YouTube helps her, keeps her accountable, and it is therapeutic for her. There's also a lot of people who keep telling me I should take a break from being online. I actually highly disagree with that because YouTube is my job and I feel so much better actually after I sit down and film a video for you guys. And I've had a lot of time to reflect and I still felt very headstrong in taking a YouTube break. But as soon as my video yesterday went live, I received hundreds and hundreds of DMs. My video has only been live for almost four hours and my DMs are filled with love, compassion, kindness, and people telling me, they don't want me to leave YouTube. YouTube in the last almost six years has been my only constant. It has been a place for me to escape, for me to have fun, for me to express my feelings. I just really thought I was doing what was best for me by just taking my weight loss off the internet and just being, screw it, you know, I thought it would be better for me. But I feel like by doing that, I lose a lot of people who once supported me and I feel like I kind of lose my mind as well because now I don't have any way of being accountable. God, this is why I love YouTube because I'm able to sit here and it's like therapy for me. <laughs> Now
Now let's discuss mental health as a facet of Ember's weight. So many times I get like the question, do you think YouTube made you, made you gain weight? Do you think you have gained weight for the views, for the money? At the age of 16, I was 420 pounds. There was no YouTube. There was no views. <laughs> there was no money. I gained that weight very quickly because I was depressed, because I binged. No one ever saw it. <laughs> She has had major depressive episodes over the years, which led to massive weight gain. I was diagnosed with depression at the age of nine. Nine years old. I was put on Prozac. Um, Prozac did not work for me. So a couple years later, which they finally cared and finally realized, they put me on Wilbutrin, which it actually helped. And then I moved to a certain foster home and they would not put me on medication. Then at 16, she gained 100 pounds in nine months. I went into a very big depression when I was 16. I went to a mental hospital for a few days. I was going through a tremendous amount. I've always been fat. <laughs> like, I've just always been fat. But when I was 16, it got way out of hand. And I gained 100 pounds in about nine months. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how I did it. But I didn't have any friends. I didn't go anywhere. I was literally was just stuck in my room and I didn't do anything besides eat and cry. I just want you guys to know that I have not been on medication for my depression since I was 18. I do feel it getting worse. In 2017, she had another major depressive episode because her mother got cancer while in prison. So I kind of want to talk about some things that are going on in my life. And I also want to talk about an update on... My mom's cancer and my mom's prison and yeah so let's just get on with this video so my depression has been really really bad lately and it's been worse than it's ever been and i feel like it just keeps getting worse and i don't understand why i don't want anyone in the comments to tell me what to do to fix this i know what to do to fix this i can see therapists i can take medicine i can see doctors i've done all this before and depression is just a nitty gritty scary 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 thing because it's constantly it, it just constantly feels like i am mourning a death that never happened like literally this is what depression looks like I wake up and I do not want to get out of bed and it's not out of laziness because I don't feel like that's the issue here. There's like all these things I want to do and I know I need to get done like laundry and dishes and YouTube and I want to do my hair and I need to shower and I need to brush my hair and put on some makeup, live a normal life, call and make appointments to things and it's like I feel like I can't do that. It's almost like I have no desire to be living. From 2018 to 2019, she was too depressed to leave her room and nearly reached 600 pounds. I'm moody, I'm a mess, I'm restless, I'm depressed. I'm the girl who hasn't left her bedroom in five days. Of course, I leave to go to the bathroom or to get something to eat. I haven't brushed my hair in about a week. I feel defeated, lonely. It's almost like me sitting in my room and doing nothing was making my depression worse and i know that's probably very big like amberlynn that's common sense duh in contrast she said when she lost the 89 pounds in 2011 it's because she was at her happiest the weight was dropping off rather quickly and i was actually down 89 pounds in about six seven months so it didn't take too long in my opinion that was like rather quickly because time was going by fast honestly this was the happiest time of my life like i don't think i've ever been as happy as i was in virginia just because i felt secure and i felt just where i was living was very homey and calm and happy and everyone supported each other and i just i feel like that really helped with my mental state Throughout 2018, she started and stopped an antidepressant called Lexapro several times because she was experiencing negative side effects, which contributed to weight gain. I'm just so overwhelmed because I literally let myself get this way. 
Like, I can blame it on the Lexapro all I want. Like, I've gotten so many messages where people are like, I took Lexapro and I gained 80 pounds too. And, like, so many people get it. But still, like, it also was my doing. I have lost almost 10 pounds. So I'm super happy about that. And I know exactly what it is. It's the fact that I'm not really binging as much as I usually do or would. I noticed that being off of Lexapro, my appetite isn't as strong which is really weird to me. Around 2019, going into 2020, she got put on Zoloft and a mood stabilizer called Lamigdol. She said these vastly improved her mental health. Now here comes the frustrating part. Ember just willy-nilly skips taking these medications and forgets to get refills, even though she admitted that being off the meds causes her to overeat and gain weight. I do tend to binge more when I am in a bad headspace. I haven't really been taking my medicine right and I know I come on here and I seem to say that a lot, but I think you guys can notice I do so much better when I'm taking my medicine. I take medicine for anxiety, obviously my estrogen pill I have to take, and the main thing I feel like that was really messing with me is my mood stabilizer because I am bipolar. So when I'm not taking those three things, and I'm not taking them right. Y'all, like, I've gone a week without taking a single one. Like, do not look at me as a role model. Like, please. If you are prescribed medicine, take it, take it right. The next aspect of Ember's mental health is therapy. Her audience has been begging her to seek therapy for years. During the early days of her channel, she said that she could not afford therapy. In 2017, she started making a lot of money on YouTube, but she was still not seriously seeking therapy, even though she was consistently talking about her depression. In late 2018, she briefly saw an online therapist who turned out to be someone from the controversial BetterHelp website. So I just want to give you guys some really good news. It is super late at night right now, and I didn't want to end the day without saying this. I got a fucking therapist. <laughs> like, what? So many of you think it's the right step for me, so I took the freaking plunge. I did it, and I am over the moon, to the hills we go, moo, 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 and the cow fell with the spoon. Make a wrap out of that one. It's only in 2021 that she started seeing a therapist on a consistent basis. I noticed that ever since I started therapy, I started taking Zoloft and I'm just doing everything. I noticed that like my relationship with food is improving so much. Like takeout isn't even something that I think about while daily. It used to be something that I just wanted constantly, craving it constantly. And I would never eat food from my own fridge. And now I am every single day. So Ember's audience is not blind to the fact that a lot of her weight struggles are tied to her mental health issues. People take my personal struggles and vulnerability and create memes, satire, monetize nitpicking reaction videos, and cruel jokes about unhealthy cycles, when in reality they are mental illness shaming. But rather the frustration comes from Ember's lack of consistent effort to use the tools available despite having the financial resources and time to do so. As it is often said, the key to weight loss is to eat less and move more. So far we've discussed Ember's failure to fulfill the eat less side of the equation. Now let's talk about the move more side. In the past decade, Ember has bought at least four fitness devices. So we bought a polar heart rate monitor. I am freaking so excited. Every day, um, maybe not Saturdays, probably not Saturdays, and probably not Sundays, um, but Monday through Friday, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to set myself goals of how many calories I want to... Um, you know burn so i got an early birthday present because as you guys know tomorrow is my birthday and um they surprised me tonight i am just so happy and grateful i've wanted one of these for the longest time so you guys ready for this i got the fitbit flex it logs your activity your sleep so the last thing i got which i am the most excited about is i got a fitbit ulta <laughs> Um, I do have a new Fitbit, which I'm super excited. I have the Charge, um, the Charge 2, so I'm super excited for that. Obviously, I'm not wearing my Apple Watch today, January 1st, which today was <laughs> would have been day one, but I forgot to charge it. 
Despite all these devices, her relationship with exercise has been shaky at best. In 2013, she quit a squat challenge because of back pain. As much as I don't want to say this, I think I'm going to have to stop the squat challenge. Honestly, I don't want to say I'm giving up. I just can't let this happen to me again because the orthopedic did say that I can have this happen to me again since I had it happen once. It's something that can reoccur pretty easily. And I think since it just kind of healed that I'm probably doing too much too quickly. It really does upset me. <sighs> Today would have been day 11 and my back hurts a little bit. I have to admit it and... Ugh. In January 2014, she introduced 100 days of movement with Nora the elliptical. She committed to do 20 minutes daily, but seven days later she uploaded a video titled Goodbye Nora, in which she informed the audience that she had to quit because of a hip issue. Day 7 of my 100 days of movement. I'm honestly not sure if you guys know what hip bursitis is, but... Sorry. <laughs> That is currently what I am dealing with, and it hurts a lot. Movement is what, you know, makes it hurt, and the elliptical is movement. I, I wanted to so badly do my 100 days of movement with the elliptical. To sit here and say that I'm going to have to say goodbye to Nora is honestly one of the most hardest videos I've had to make. After dumping Nora, she started 15 weeks of movement doing a live exercise program tailored for obese and disabled people. But then she quit after two weeks. I, I, I just, I can't wrap my head around how this is happening, why this is happening, why this happens to me. Why everyone else I watch on here, they're like, oh, exercise, I'm losing weight, exercise, I'm losing weight. It's, it's just not like that. In October, she said exercise makes her retain water and slows down her weight loss. When it comes to working out, as you guys know, I eat less to lose weight, I eat healthy to lose weight, I eat better to lose weight, and I count calories to lose weight. Sometimes I don't count calories to lose weight. Sometimes I just know it in my head because I've done it for so long. But I exercise for heart health. I don't exercise to lose weight because just from my past experience, I actually hold on to water more even when I drink a lot of it because I do drink a lot of water. I actually hold on to water more when I exercise. So I lose weight actually slower when I exercise, but I don't mind it. In April 2015, Emma announced that she was going to start a new exercise program called HasFit. And on day one, she had to exercise for five minutes. Then two days later, she said her doctor told her that the exercise was too strenuous. I kind of just wanted to give you guys an update. I really, really, really wanted to start this workout program. I did start it, and for some reason, my knees were really bothering me, and this has never happened before. Normally, when I work out, like, I do something really hard that I'm not used to. Obviously, I'm going to have some sort of pains. I also had a calf pain. Normally, I accept it, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, my muscles are getting a workout, something they're not used to. I had a pain the other day that was... <laughs> Far more worse than I've ever felt and it didn't feel really like a muscle pain it was like this sharp almost as if someone was like putting a knife into my calf and just going down and twisting it it didn't feel normal it didn't feel right I ended up going to the doctor and they told me that the activities I was doing was too strenuous especially because I haven't been working out it's really like a big letdown to me because I was really looking forward to this in January 2016 it was the start of a new year and she said she would not add exercise into her weight loss plan. I'm not adding exercise in January because I work a lot already. My feet hurt all the time. My heel hurts all the time. My ankle, my back, like my back has been hurting so bad lately. I think I have a slip disc again. This happens quite frequently. In March, she said Destiny had been going to the gym, but Emma declined the invitation to join her. When am I going to start exercising? Destiny has a gym membership and 
She has gone without me a couple times, but she has the option of actually taking someone with her. I just have always declined because again, I do have a really bad foot. There is something wrong with my heel. I have talked about this in so many videos. I really don't wanna to go to the doctor for it because I'm afraid they'll tell me like, oh, you can't work. Try to rest it for a couple weeks. In August 2016, she and Destiny played Pokemon Go, and instead of attempting to walk around and catch Pokemon, she attached her phone to a ceiling fan. So if you guys play Pokemon Go, then you know that you have to like hatch eggs in it, and there is like this hack where you can actually put your phone on a ceiling fan and it'll make it to where like, because you're supposed to walk like 2 km, is that what it said? 10 km, and that's like pretty far if you do the math so if you put it on a fan you don't have to like walk i keep telling destiny why don't you just go you know walk but it's actually really hot out so she put it on the fan and it's actually working so if you play pokemon go and you have to hatch an egg do this make sure you duct tape it though because it'll come flying off in May 2018, she said she wanted to go to the gym but couldn't due to her asthma and the lack of stamina. Next question is, are you gonna go back to the gym? I'm going to go back to the gym. I pay for a membership every single month and I haven't gone in a couple months, honestly. Um, I went a few times when I first got the membership but I haven't gone since. My asthma, I do have asthma, 100,000%. I know a lot of people are like, you self-diagnose. No, I've always had asthma. That's something I've always had. Um, I don't currently have an inhaler and my asthma has been really bad lately. And I really want to build my stamina because going to the gym and only working out for 10 minutes to me, I'm embarrassed. I'm thoroughly embarrassed. In June, 2018, she said she couldn't start the gym because of her cough. So I also want to start exercising three times a week. I want to keep it slow. I don't want to push myself. I don't want to overwhelm myself. I don't want to hurt myself. I am just getting over a really bad cough. In July 2018, she said the reason she wasn't going to the gym was because she was too big for the gym equipment. And then I went to go to the elliptical, which I was super excited, super excited for. So I got on the elliptical and I pressed play and every single time I'd start moving, it was like flashing. It was like, pause, pause, pause. And it was because I was too big. I literally was like breaking the machine, I feel like. So that's one of the reasons why I'm currently not going to the gym because it's embarrassing. It's like, I can't even fit on the freaking equipment. Like, what? In January, 2020, Amber was asked if she had any plans to work out. She said no. What is your plan to lose weight? Are you going to work out? So working out, no, not, that's not really the word for it. Um, I'm trying to move more, take more steps, things like that, which definitely help. I feel like there's a certain weight I want to be before I like work out. In 2023, she still has not managed to stick to any exercise plan. The other excuse that Ember loves is that she cannot exercise because she doesn't have the right shoes. This wrong shoes meme dates back to 2014 when she first started her channel. Someone was like, oh my gosh, you were using one of those carts that, you know. And so I kind of wanted, just wanted to explain. I probably should have explained in my vlog, but I wasn't even thinking about it. I was going to and I totally forgot. And I kind of just wanted to um, explain that to you guys that... I wore the wrong shoes and I shouldn't have and I did lots and lots of walking before I sat in that cart. We do have the glow run today so I'm super excited. Over five miles but this is like straight walking so look at her. She's rocking it. I finished. So with asthma and no medicine, no sweater, no jacket, no coat. Oh, in 40 degree weather, no tennis shoes. I know I wore the wrong shoes. I wore flats. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a long day at work. We're driving one of these. Wait, I'm gonna go this way. You wanna know the funniest thing? At this, at this Walmart, everybody and their mother uses this thing. Like everybody. We see like skinny people, young people, old people purple people, yellow people, carrot people. I just saw carrots, so I said that. Like, everybody. 
I think it's because they have so many. Literally, they have 50. I've never seen a Walmart like this before. So we've had a long day. I'm wearing the wrong shoes and my feet hurt and so do hers, so. Would you mind sharing the physical issues you experience with your obesity? Well, I can say that my feet hurt a lot. Destiny, this is a serious moment. I mean, that's like a given. I've never really had like ankle issues or knee issues until well, recently. Ankle, well, yeah, until recently. My ankle, my left ankle, the inner part of it, has been hurting really bad for a couple of months. And I don't know like what it's from. Could be my weight, could be me working, could be the wrong shoes. <laughs> so we're at Walmart because Destiny is sick and she needs some new medicine. And I wore the wrong shoes to work today because you guys are never gonna believe this if I tell you. Destiny, do you wanna tell them? You lost your tennis shoes. Yeah. I lost my tennis shoes. How does one lose a pair of tennis shoes that they take off in the same spot every single day? Off to Tarjay. Ow. That was special. I want to jump off. Jump. I'm scared. My feet are hurt a little. I'm wearing the wrong jump. shoes. Jump. And this is higher than it looks, okay, you guys? Jump. I can't. I'm scared. Take it. I'm actually scared right now. <laughs> Jump. That was not jumping, that was falling with style. I did not fall. Yeah. My heel spur hurts right now. Whew. I'm wearing the wrong shoes, fellas. Wrong shoes. There's literally a sign that says no climbing. See, I'm wearing the wrong shoes too. Like, I would not be able to step down this. It's a lot steeper than it looks. And I'm wearing flats and they have holes in them. Oh, and if you guys are new to my channel and wondering why I use this, it's because it's 2 a.m. Destiny just does it because like, I feel stupid doing it. And, but I really do it because of my heel spur and I've had a really long day and I'm wearing the totally wrong shoes and it hurts really bad. We should not discriminate against who uses these versus who don't because that's kind of messed up, so. And I have been moving more. I'm trying to just get up and stand more. I've been doing some walking, but unfortunately yesterday I hurt my calf. I don't really know what happened. In the middle of my exercise, all of a sudden my calf, just the sharp, tight pain almost like brought me to my knees. And I had to like limp a little bit and I was just like, damn, because I've been enjoying my walking every single day. It is pretty freaking cool how every single time I do it, it just seems like I get better and better, whether it be faster or I hurt less or I'm breathing better. My heart's not beating as fast. But unfortunately, I will be taking a break until my calf does not hurt anymore. And then moving forward so that doesn't happen, I'm going to be stretching before and after my walk and usually i wear the wrong shoes so i might actually wear me some tennis shoes ember's general lifestyle is extremely sedentary and she has a lot of free time to sit at home get bored and eat in the decade that she's been on youtube she has only had a physical job for 15 months spanning from 2015 to early 2017. in 2016 ember mentioned that on her days off from work she overeats so on Saturday was my day off. I was nervous about that because on my days off, I always mess up. Always. It does not fail. In her recent tell-all, Destiny said that Ember and her mother got into a physical altercation in 2016 because Ember wanted to quit her job. And Destiny's mother was concerned that Ember would become completely sedentary and gain weight. I want to say like a week or two into training at our job. So we weren't like working our actual hours that we would be working i think we were working like 3 to 11. um i think it was like the second week honestly we were sitting at the kitchen table getting ready to leave for work like packing my lunch whatever just sitting on the kitchen table talking and i think i asked amber lynn how she likes the job so far and how you know easy it is and all that and she starts saying that she likes it that it is easy but she wanted to focus more on youtube and she was like if by the time training's over I decide I don't want to do it. I just won't start the actual job. And I don't know what came over my mom after this, but my mom came in there and started just saying, you know, like she said something along the lines of, you don't need to stay at home all day and YouTube, it's not going to be good for you trying to lose weight. And I guess Amberlynn got offended. 
about, you know, weight loss and all that. It's a never ending thing with her on that. And I don't know, her and my mom started arguing back and forth and my mom ended up getting physical with Amber Lynn. Um, that's where the K-Cup holder comes back. Um, I think they're kind of slapping around at each other and my mom, that K-Cup holder was sitting on the stairs for us to take upstairs or whatever. My mom came back with it and hit her over the head with it. It was, it was very traumatizing for me, honestly, it was. I was freaking out. A few years later, Emma herself acknowledged that not having a job outside of her home contributed to the amount of weight that she gained. If we're being like completely realistic, I feel like if I had like a regular job where I had to leave the house, I don't think it, I would have had such a huge opportunity to reach almost 600 pounds. I'm not gonna blame YouTube. I'm just gonna blame the fact that I haven't really had routine in my life for years. Her audience has been begging her to get a little bit of exercise by walking her dog Twinkie. But Ember has never done that consistently, which contributed to her dog becoming obese. So another reason why I want to lose weight is I want to be able to walk Twinkie more. I feel like she doesn't get like that walking exercise. She doesn't get a lot of exercise because I do play fetch with her a lot. Like she loves it so much. But I want to be able to like go on longer walks with her. When she goes grocery shopping, she doesn't walk around the store. She uses a mobility scooter. Her hobbies include coloring, board games, journaling, building Lego, and reading, which are all performed sitting down. In addition to money, the reason Ember has stayed on YouTube is because, in her own words, she desperately wants to be a weight loss inspiration to others. And I'm going back to the gym. I'm going to be on track and I want to feel amazing and proud and accomplished. And I want to inspire like I used to and I want to motivate people and uh, just all this stuff. And I want it so bad. So I have three reasons so far. First one is breathing. Second one is longer life. And third one is inspiration. So I just wanted to let you guys know that those are mine. And I want people to be inspired by me. And I want Becky to be inspired by me because I know she wants to lose weight too. YouTube is my life and I like the journey for myself to go back and watch it and I want to inspire others. A very big one is I want to be a success story so bad. It seems like Ember's need to be a weight loss inspiration may be tied to a sense of self-worth and purpose. She even said in her own words that when she lost 89 pounds, she felt worthy of love. So I started getting a lot of compliments from my ex's mom's friends who we'd like do little get togethers. And like, I remember one time one of her friends was like, you are getting so skinny. You're making me want to lose weight. And it's crazy because it's like, I never thought that I could like inspire other people. I was inspiring so many people and so many people were proud of me, including myself, because I felt amazing. I was able to wear jeans that couldn't even fit to my freaking knees the year prior. Like I, losing those 89 pounds, I actually felt like somebody. I felt like someone worthy of love and compassion. And I felt beautiful for the first time in my life. In a tragic way, Ember is an inspiration to her audience. Her comment section is filled with people who say watching her motivates them to lose weight so they do not end up like her. ER commented, Fear of becoming like Ember Lynn is honestly a great motivator. I was 330 pounds around New Year's. Now I'm 265 pounds. And below that is Casey who said, Started watching you about a month ago and I've lost 20 pounds. You are incredibly motivating. Now you just got to motivate yourself. Maybe this is the end of Ember's story when it comes to weight loss. She's just a cautionary tale for others to learn from. Or maybe there's still a comeback story to be written. A story of Emberlyn Reed, a woman who turns 10 years of failure into a weight loss success story. I guess only time will tell. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in seeing future content from me, please click the subscribe button and notification bell.